So, hey guys. Hope you are doing great. Welcome to Just a Shinobi. 2.0. So, this is the story about what if Naruto Shiraga no Tensai has Goho eyes. The 6 eye. Part 1. I am sure you will love this what if. And if you did. Please hit the subscribe button for more awesome videos like this. Check out my other videos, share with your friends and enjoy them. Check out the description. Comment down your opinion. So, without wasting any time. Let's see today's what if. The Hidden Leaf Village. One of the five great hidden villages and the strongest out of them. The Hidden Leaf has a Hokage as its head and there have been four Hokage in its history. The fourth Hokage tragically died on the night of the Kaiubi attack, which led to the third Hokage coming back in power. Naruto. A six-year-old boy who lives in the Hidden Leaf. He has had a rough life until now and even he himself doesn't know why. The villagers yelled at him at his sight and some even chased him away. He has learned to avoid the villagers just so he avoids getting beat up by them. Everyone called him a demon, a fox, but he didn't know why and questions himself, why would they do that? Was he really a demon? Evil incarnate. One night he was kicked out of the only place he could call home. He lived in an orphanage, but even there he was still hated. His favorite place to go was in the library the orphanage has where he could have a quiet time. Reading books was his favorite thing to do. No one yelled at him. No one is calling him a demon. Books were just awesome and in return, he learned a lot from them. But now that he was kicked out of the only thing he could call home, he didn't know what to do and where to go. He has avoided the villagers for a year now, but now that he has no home he didn't know what to do. The villagers had also gotten curious now. They hadn't seen the demon boy for over a year now and thought that someone had taken him down. Which they had no problem with. That demon killed the fourth Hokage, so he deserves to die anyway. Word reached the current Hokage of how he hasn't been seen from the villagers for a while now, but he knew that he avoided them and he still is in the orphanage. But he couldn't help but be concerned. He was entrusted with him and he still doesn't know if he made the right choice by sending him to that orphanage. Even he noticed the villagers hate but didn't know what to do. Tenzo. Bring the Anbu following Naruto here and have them report to me immediately. Here is an order with get a nod from him and disappear. Naruto was in an alley trying to find a good spot to sleep for now. The Anbu following him just watched. It's sad, but they were ordered to only watch and only intervene if someone from outside the village tried to kidnap or harm him. As they watch him with sad looks on their faces they see Tenzo just arriving. With a nod, they all disappear and go to the Hokage's office. Here is in just looks at them waiting for their report. Naruto has unfortunately been kicked out of the orphanage. At the moment he's looking for a place to sleep reported Anbu with a sad voice. The third Hokage was furious. Although his facial expressions didn't change, the aura he was releasing was insane. If anyone with a level or lower had been there, they would have just fallen unconscious. Those monkeys. Said a furious Hiruzen, but then he calmed down. Show me where he is, he ordered. The third Hokage arrived at the side of Naruto lying on the ground and trying to sleep. Rough ground and surrounded by trash. It stank and it was pretty cold. Hiruzen holding back his tears goes to Naruto. What happened? Hiruzen asks. Naruto was surprised to see the third Hokage but happy at the same time. He was the only person who didn't look at Naruto with hate. I I was kicked out. And I don't even know why Naruto said with a frail voice but then continued. Why would they do that? I never did anything to them. Hiruzen was really mad but immediately calmed down. Come Naruto. I'll bring you to a place where you can sleep. With that Hiruzen picks Naruto up and flickers away. They arrived at Hiruzen's house. You can stay here for tonight, said Hiruzen. Naruto was really tired, so he just fell down on the bed and fell asleep. Hiruzen then returns to the Hokage's office. He had to think of consequences for the people working at the orphanage. Who would just kick a six-year-old? The best he came up with at the moment was firing them and having someone else take over the orphanage, and so he did. Now he had to find a place for Naruto to stay in. This is quite troublesome. Having Naruto stay alone in an apartment wouldn't be wise as he's too young. He could stay at my place but would be there alone as well. Hiruzen then cursed at them. He decided to talk to Naruto and then decide what to do with him. Naruto wakes up. Confused as to where he was but then he remembered what happened. Hiruzen comes to see that Naruto had just woken up. He brought him breakfast to eat. As Naruto finished eating Hiruzen tried talking to Naruto. So nah he was interrupted by Naruto who had a sad look on his face. Why does everyone hate me? Naruto asked, looking Hiruzen in the eyes. They call me a demon. A fox. Every time they see me they yell and some even chase me away. Hiruzen was sad and mad at hearing this. No six-year-old should go through this. And those damn villagers. But now he was puzzled. What should he tell him? He can't just tell him that he has a demon fox sealed inside him. Listen Naruto. You shouldn't listen to what they say. You're a young boy who is kind. You want to become a shinobi right? I'm sure you'll become a great one if not the greatest. Naruto's eyes lit up. 
His dream was to become a shinobi just like the previous Hokage. He read about them and knew just how awesome they were. His favorite Hokage was the fourth one. He alone was feared by other nations and defeated 1,000 shinobi single-handedly. He even died protecting the village. Even though the villagers were being mean to Naruto, Naruto still loved the hidden leaf and the history behind it. How it was created and about the will of fire. Will you train me then, Jiji? Naruto asked with an excited face. Hiruzen surely wanted to, but he was really busy with Hokage duty. I'm sorry Naruto, but you know since I'm a Hokage, I don't have that much time. Although. Naruto frowned at this, but he saw that his Jiji had an idea. Although. Naruto asked. I could have someone else train you. Someone awesome Hiruzen said as he saw Naruto's eyes lit up again. But now there is another small problem at hand. Naruto's home. Naruto. Since you don't have a place to stay. You could stay here or have your own apartment Naruto then started thinking. Even if he stayed at his Jiji's place, he probably wouldn't see him that often since he's so busy. Plus it would be nice to get used to living on his own. So he decided. I think it would be better to live on my own, Jiji. I can get used to living on my own and not relying on other people Naruto said. Hiruzen smiles. Alright then. I already have your apartment ready. I'll take you there Hiruzen picks Naruto up and goes to his new apartment. I have to learn that Naruto thought to himself. The apartment was new and clean. It was already furnished. It had a kitchen, bedroom, living room, and a bathroom. All Naruto could have asked for. The kitchen already had food in its fridge and a book about learning for beginners, which made Naruto smile at that. The bedroom only had a bed and a nightstand by its side. The living room had a couch and a coffee table in it. It also had a bookshelf with books on it. This is perfect, Jiji Naruto was smiling like a bastard holding tears back. This also made Hiruzen happy seeing him happy. Glad you like it. I'll bring you money by the end of every month, but be careful what you spend it on. Also, tomorrow at 7 a.m. at the training ground 7. That's when you'll meet your sensei. With that, he left Naruto. Alright. I'm going to be the strongest ninja there is Naruto declared. He had a day now to get used to this new apartment and prepare for tomorrow. He had never done any ninja training before, although avoiding the villagers was training in itself. Since Naruto had no idea how he's going to train tomorrow, he prepared mentally. At 6 in the morning. Naruto just woke up excited for the first day of training. His Jiji said that his sensei is going to be awesome, so that's even more reason to be excited. He got up and made breakfast. He had instant ramen he bought yesterday. He doesn't know how to make proper breakfast yet so instant ramen is the best he could do. He ate and got out. I better do quick exercises before I go. With that thought, he leaves and goes out. He is waiting at the training ground at 7, and at exactly 7 am someone arrives in a flash. At first sight, Naruto saw that he is an Anbu and that he is pretty strong. It was only something he unconsciously knew. Good morning. I'm your sensei, Anbu said. Naruto was analyzing him. He said good morning back and introduced himself. His mask was fox-like and had brown spiky hair and normal Anbu clothes. That's all Naruto could make of him. Anbu's name is Tenzo, but Naruto calls him sensei. The training was mostly chakra control training. Tenzo didn't want him to do much physical training, so it didn't stop his growth spurt. One thing Tenzo noticed by Naruto was that even though he had way too much chakra for a six-year-old, he still had not bad chakra control. Almost every ninja who had a large amount of chakra under their control wouldn't be as good as someone who has less chakra. But that didn't apply for Naruto. Tenzo first taught Naruto the three basic jutsu you learn in the academy. Those were. Clone technique, substitution jutsu, and transformation jutsu. It took Naruto a while to get the hand of those jutsus, but after a week he got the hang of it. Since Naruto knew the basic clone technique, Tenzo thought that it's a good idea to teach him the shadow clone jutsu. The better, solid version of the clone technique. And with the amount of chakra Naruto has he had no doubt Naruto could pull it out. Four years time skip, Naruto is now 10 years old. During that time he had improved a lot in training. He had also joined the academy. Naruto was more of a quiet guy although sometimes a bit cheerful. He didn't see the point of the academy. He knew everything they were teaching him. The only thing he liked in the academy was the tojutsu training. Since he didn't do that much tojutsu training with his sensei. Even though the academy was boring, it still wasn't that bad. The teachers were actually fair towards him and didn't really show any hostile reaction towards him. His classmates weren't that bad either except Sasuke and his fangirls. He hated how he effortlessly had girls around him. He just sat in the class and ignored everyone. What's so good about him anyway? Thought Naruto. Although he even had some fangirls of his own, he was oblivious enough not to notice them. Naruto has white hair and sky blue eyes. He wears a full black tracksuit with a Yuzumaki symbol on his back. He was quiet in class too and didn't talk much, except when he was with Shikamaru and Choji. The teachers seemed to like him too since he was a good student with good grades and didn't really cause problems. 
Naruto never used his full power in the class though since he wanted to surprise them at one point. He only used just enough to get an average grade. Training with an Anbu sure has its perks. His training had gone pretty well for the past years and today was the day he was going to learn his chakra affinity. He was pretty excited. During the four years, he had also learned the body flicker jutsu, but he still wasn't that good at using it. He arrived at the usual training ground. Naruto always got there earlier so he could do exercises before he began. 30 minutes of exercises before his sensei arrived seemed to do good on him. Enzo arrived and had a chakra induction paper on him. A special type of paper that is made only with a special type of tree. Naruto knew what it was the moment he saw it and his eyes lit up with even more excitement. They greeted each other. Tenzo gave Naruto the special paper and explained. All right, Naruto. This is a special type of paper as I'm sure you already know. You push your chakra into the paper and it will show you what your chakra affinity is. If it ignites and turns to ash then it's fire. If it gets cleanly cut in two then it's wind. If it wrinkles then it's lightning. If it turns to dirt and crumbles away then it's earth and if it turns wet then it's water. Naruto nods as he already knows this. Naruto then grabs the paper and starts pouring his chakra into it. The paper is cleanly cut in two, one side crumbles away, and the second side wrinkles. Tenzo is pretty shocked seeing as he's got three affinities. Only a few and have three affinities which made Tenzo even more proud of his student. Tenzo smiles and then says good job, Naruto. Since you found your chakra nature today, you'll get the rest of the day free since the next few years aren't going to be easy, and with that Tenzo disappears in a swirl of leaves. Naruto, also being proud, goes out to finally treat himself to Raymond seeing as he hasn't eaten there for a while. Yo Tucci. A miso chashu pork Raymond for me please. A shop owner turns around as he sees Naruto. He remembers him from when he was younger. He used to come there quite often. Hey, Naruto, Tucci said with a surprised voice, and then continued. Haven't seen you for a while. How have you been? He. I've been training. Naruto said in a proud voice rubbing his nose. Uo, I see. Here's a Raymond in the house Tucci said, also proud of Naruto. Thank you. Naruto replied back in a cheerful voice. Naruto is home. Reading a book while also being bored. Other than training he didn't really have that much to do except play with his friends. But they were training today so he was way too bored. Training was the only thing he could think of right now so he trained. He had only done minimal physical training until now, so he thought he'd kick it up a notch and maybe increase his speed and power. He had a plan for his training. He had only gotten hints of it from Tenzo, but he also finally figured it out. The secret of shadow clones. With his amount of chakra he had no doubt he could use the jutsu to its full advantage. So now he could train on a few things at the same time. He put that idea on the back of his mind. He's definitely using any shortcuts he has to get stronger. Naruto just came home exhausted from his training. That was the first serious physical training he had done and it was pretty draining. But all that tiredness seemed to have washed away when he remembered that tomorrow he's finally going to learn battle. Until now he had mostly worked on his chakra control and the four basics. His chakra control was really good. Way better than one would think for someone with such high chakra levels. He had also learned the shadow clone jutsu, transformation jutsu, and the substitution jutsu and perfected them. But he was having trouble with the body flicker jutsu. Although D rank, it still was a bit more complicated than the previous. But he was hoping he would perfect it in the next two years. Naruto was resting as he made his clones prepare dinner. Even the clones were as lazy as the original, but they had to do what they had to do. They had prepared a nice hot and healthy meal for him to eat. As quickly as Naruto ate, he jumped on his bed and immediately slept. As always he wakes up at 6 am and does his morning routine. He brushes his teeth and washes his face. Puts on new and clean clothes and then eats breakfast. At 6.30 am he left the house and went to the training ground. Always the same routine. First, it was boring, but after a while, he got used to it. At 7 am sharp his sensei arrives ready to train the young boy. Good morning Naruto. Hope you're ready for today's training said Tenzo. Good morning sensei. Yes of course I'm ready replied away too excited Naruto. As soon as Tenzo was about to start his training, Naruto interrupts. Sensei. I have an idea I would like to use for my training. Oh? Replied Tenzo, already guessing what it might be. I'd like to use my shadow clones to train. I could have large groups of clones learning multiple times while I train on Tujutsu. What do you think, Sensei? Asked Naruto. Tenzo smiles good that you figured it out. For the past few years, we barely focused on your Tujutsu training. Having two years just focused on it seems like a good idea, but then Tenzo stopped thinking. Well yes, when dispelling a shadow clone returned its memories to the original, no one ever used it to train, so who knows how useful it will be. Tenzo then asks Naruto have you already tried seeing how good it works? Yes, I have. I used them to learn a few things while I was training. For example cooking. 
I'm still not the best at it, but I'm decent. Naruto pauses a bit and then continues. But Shadow Clones have a bit of a harder time learning something new that I previously didn't. Enzo was thinking if it's really a good idea to let the Shadow Clones train. But Naruto wouldn't suggest it if it wasn't so he asks him. So? Why would you suggest it then? Well, well they aren't as good at mastering a jutsu as I would be, they still help a lot at multitasking. So while I, the original, focus on Tejutsu for the next two years, the clones will probably master it in the next two years, as well answered Naruto. Tenzo then smiles at this. Very good, Naruto Tenzo then forms hand seals as another Tenzo comes out of him. It was the shadow clone, but not like the one you have. It was a wood-style clone. Just at first sight, it seemed more durable than a normal one. Alright then, I will aid you in your Tejutsu training, while my clone will help your clones in the ninjutsu training, said Tenzo. Naruto then nods and creates 60 clones. Evenly divide the 60 clones into three groups. Each group has 20 clones. Each group is also divided into two groups of 10. Six groups of clones, each learning another jutsu. This was also a bit harder for Tenzo's clone, but he managed. He only showed the clones the basics, and they would work alone after. Tenzo was planning on adding chakra weights on his body and then sparring with him for a few hours. They started small. First adding 5 kilograms. His whole body was heavier and it was hard to move. But he got used to it. Tenzo ordered him to keep them on for the next two years. Adding weight every few days or a week. The first day of sparring wasn't all that bad. 5 kgs wasn't that bad since he got used to it. But the next it was worse. 2.5 kgs didn't really seem much, but adding the 2.5 kgs to the 5 kgs was pretty draining. Thankfully the exercises he did a few years ago seemed to pay off. Naruto and Tenzo would spar for hours. Tenzo didn't even phase that much, while Naruto was exhausted. He still gave it his all and kept trying. After a few more hours his body started to ache. His muscles were sore and his limbs seemed heavier. He was panting. Look like we went overboard a little, Naruto. Take a break said Tenzo. Naruto without saying a word goes near a tree, drinks a bit of water, and lays down to rest. The wind was calm, somewhat warm. The birds chirping, the tree leaves rustling. Everything seemed so calm that he had fallen asleep. An hour passes. Naruto was still sleeping but was woken up by Tenzo. He didn't want to ruin his sleep, but he could catch a cold if he stayed longer. He taps on Naruto's shoulder and says Naruto. Naruto, wake up. Naruto slowly opens his eyes. Looks around as he comes to his senses. How long have I been asleep? He asked. For an hour, Tenzo replied. An hour do you know how much I could have trained during that one hour Naruto hurriedly stands up yelling. Naruto, calm down. You couldn't have trained anyway since your body is in th Tenzo was shocked seeing as he's in really good shape. Kaiubi. I knew he had good regeneration abilities, but this is quite something. Tenzo thought. What? Naruto asked. Nothing. Come on now, stop slacking off, let's get to training said Tenzo laughing seeing Naruto's irritated face. After a few minutes of sparring, so an hour of sleep really healed him from the soreness. The fatigue. This will probably help him improve his body faster. Tenzo thought. Every day Tenzo and Naruto sparred, Naruto's fighting style improved. He became more skilled overall. He could do logical thinking. Predict his opponent's movements and act upon that, and he was doing a really good job on that. His speed was also the most impressive. Such an impressive speed at such a young age. He will surely become a great ninja. At the end of the week, he increased the chakra weights on his body to 10. Every day increasing them little by little at the end of the week he got to 10. Moving alone was pretty hard and he had to keep them on every time. After the first week, he kept the weights at the same level until the end of the week. That was when he'd either increase it by a half, one, one and a half, or two kilograms. His healing abilities made things a lot easier. Even after being completely exhausted, the next day would mostly be the same as the last day. Depending on how much strain he put on his body. Sometimes he would go overboard and wouldn't be able to train for a day. There also was a problem to which he found a simple solution. Shopping. Naruto going shopping was near impossible. The villagers yelled at him. If he even stared at an item in a store he would be pushed out of the store by the owner. The simple solution to this was the transformation jutsu. Transform to an ordinary civilian so when he went shopping he wouldn't catch any attention. He had already asked his Jiji if he was allowed to do that, and he had allowed him to as long as he didn't do anything out of the ordinary and cause problems. During the years of training, he had found out about his sensing abilities. He had it since he was younger, but it was an unconscious ability so he never noticed. Looking back, the first time he met his sensei, he noticed that he was really strong. He still can't control it to activate it at will. He has tried to, many times but never succeeded. Naruto also decided to take a look at ceiling. His favorite hokage, the fourth hokage, was a ceiling master. So he decided to take a look into it. 
it was really complicated and I noticed that it could be pretty versatile. But he thought that although it would be cool to master it, it didn't really fit his style. He was kinda upset but got over it later. Not all the fourth Hokage could do, he'll be able to do. Plus he's already decided to become even more awesome than all the previous Hokage. But before that, he had to become a full-fledged shinobi. Someone who carries his duties. Even Naruto knew that before he could become and succeed as a Hokage, he had to succeed as a shinobi. Naruto shakes his head and heads home. A few weeks passed since the real training started. At the end of the day, he dispelled the shadow clones and learned what they learned. The ninjutsu training was going pretty well. Better than he expected really. He also noticed something during his elemental training. Although his main three affinities were wind, earth, and lightning, wind was still superior to the other two. His wind chakra was stronger than the earth and lightning one, although not by a lot. If it goes on like this, I'll most definitely master these at the end of the second year. Naruto thought. He was pretty excited. He was getting better day by day. Even his day offs were pretty straining. He was told to lower the weights by half and he did so, but it was pretty tiring to move with weights. This is his life now though so he had to get used to it. After weeks of training, he had an idea about the lightning release. He wasn't really sure it could work, but even Tenzo said that there is a slight chance it might. So now he makes 40 clones for wind and earth and 30 for lightning alone, and one jutsu also. The jutsu he was working on was a branch technique of an already existing one. It works very similarly the same as the ones he read about, but since it was a branch technique, it was weaker. Weaker but still really useful is what Naruto thought. A few months pass. Naruto's tojutsu and body shape is way better than it was when he began. The progress he made was really good and he was really happy and proud of it. Wind release was what he made the most progress on. It was easier to learn and master than the other two affinities. Earth wasn't that bad either. Lightning was what he had the most trouble on. Whenever he hit a dead end he couldn't ask anyone for a piece of advice, since anyone he and his sensei knows that is in the village, Cantor doesn't know the jutsu. All the previous two he could sense his sensei was a great earth user himself, and he was close with someone who used wind release as well, so he could point his mistakes here and there. He was also really happy that he decided to focus more on the lightning jutsu, since it was the hardest to master. His jutsu had also progressed really far. He could now better predict his opponent's movements and could react to them faster due to how his body had progressed. It's been two months since he started training. He only had one day a week off, but today something happened that he didn't really expect. Naruto and Tenzo finished sparring. Alright, Naruto. Good job on reacting to my attacks this well again, said Tenzo smiling. He was also proud of the progress Naruto was making. Thank you sensei. We'll continue again after a small break. Asked Naruto panting. An unexpected answer came out of Tenzo's mouth. No Naruto. You should take a longer break this time. I was thinking of a one week break. As soon as Naruto heard those words, a shocked expression appeared on his face. Sure, he took one day breaks every one or two weeks. But a whole week. But why? Naruto asked. When was the last time you met your friends outside of school? Tenzo replied with another question. Naruto then realized. He hadn't met his friends in a long time. He did talk with them while in school, but they rarely went out since he started training. Naruto didn't answer. You're too focused on training. Yes, it's important, but don't forget your friends. We'll meet again in five days and continue training. Have fun Naruto Tenzo said, and with that he disappeared. Aw, oh, man. Well, I do see his point. Haven't played with them for a while too. Naruto says so he goes to meet up with his friends. First, he went to Kiba to see if he was busy. But he was also training so he, unfortunately, couldn't come. Kiba is an obnoxious guy but a good friend. He's one of the people who didn't hate him. Naruto also admired him for how hard he trains to become stronger. Naruto was thinking of also meeting up with Shino. Shino was also a quiet guy and they barely talked to one another. He's a pretty cool guy, but Naruto couldn't really figure out what he was thinking as he does with others. Sometimes he got the feeling like Shino doesn't really like Naruto or that he bothers him, but he really didn't know. Naruto couldn't find him anyways. Well, that's what I get for trying to meet in such a short time, Naruto thought. Naruto was walking towards Choji's house. Choji was a wholesome guy. He would sometimes offer Naruto chips which he appreciated. While walking he saw Choji and his father going to a barbec. Naruto knew what was going to happen in the restaurant, so he best not bother them in their lunchtime. Best that leaves Shikamaru. Naruto thought. Choji and Shikamaru are his first friends. Through them, he also met other awesome people. Although not a large friend group, he still appreciated them and was happy that they also didn't judge him. Shikamaru was different. He was a lazy person who said troublesome quite often. He was a nice guy nonetheless. As Naruto neared his house, he saw him and his father playing shogi. He got kinda upset. Everyone was busy. But he couldn't blame them since he wanted to meet them in such a short time. 
As he turned around to go home, Shikamaru had noticed him. Hey, Naruto, Shikamaru said in a somewhat loud voice calling him. Naruto turned around again, seeing that he was noticed. He walks towards them and says yo, Shikamaru. I have some time off so I thought we could hang out, Naruto said with a somewhat low voice. Well, I'm playing shogi right now. Want to join in? Shikamaru asked. I don't know. I never played it before. Naruto replied back. As they were having a conversion, Shikaku was observing. He did meet Naruto a few times before. He knew he was training with an Anbu, so he had to be strong too. His black tracksuit with blue eyes and white hair gave different vibes each time. Sometimes he was giving off like a slacking off and uninterested vibe, but then also a strong and confident vibe. It was quite strange. He saw that the relationship between his son and Naruto seemed well, so he stood up and headed towards the door to go inside. Well, you guys have fun, he said and left. So, you've never played shogi before, right? Want me to teach you? Asked Shikamaru though he didn't really want to teach someone since he was lazy. I don't know, it seems like a confusing game. How about we go out for a walk and maybe play something? It's been a while Naruto replied back. Shikamaru smiled as although going out was troublesome, teaching him a new game from scratch was even more so, so he thanked Naruto in his mind for not agreeing on learning the game. Fine, let's go. He replied. In about two years we are finally going to be real shinobi. I'm really excited. Said Naruto. Yay. You have been training a lot her replied Shikamaru. Of course. I'm going to be the strongest shinobi Naruto said with a giggle. Troublesome. Seriously, where do you get all that motivation from? Shikamaru asked in a sarcastic voice. He, you should try harder to be honest. I'm sure you could get even stronger. Naruto replied back. I'm trying hard enough, Shikamaru said. As they were walking towards the park and saw a lonely Ichiha sitting by himself. Naruto tried to talk to him a few times before, but he would ignore him. Naruto also felt bad about what happened to him. He felt somewhat of a connection between them, but he would also get pissed off by him because of his attitude. Naruto and Sasuke made eye contact, but then Sasuke just turned his head saying piss off. Naruto got really annoyed by that, and he himself didn't know why. Normally he wouldn't get easily annoyed. So he just ignores Sasuke and walks with Shikamaru to the park. Shikamaru just looks either down or up avoiding any eye contact with anyone. What do you think of him, Shikamaru? Naruto asked. I don't know. It's sad what happened to him so I guess his attitude is excused. I would probably ignore him though Shikamaru replied back. Yeah you probably would, Naruto said with a laugh. Naruto knew really well how it is to be alone. He wanted to help Sasuke, but he just ignored Naruto. In the academy, Naruto was usually quiet. Didn't talk when unnecessary. He usually sat next to Shikamaru, Choji, Kiba, or sometimes even Shino. He would however try to sit next to Sasuke and get him to talk. But sometimes that would also be impossible due to the annoying fangirls. Sasuke was at the top of the class, while Naruto only tried hard enough to get average grades, since he really didn't want the attention Sasuke was getting. Shikamaru however noticed a few fangirls of Naruto, but he always wondered how Naruto could be so oblivious to never notice them. A few hours passed and it was getting late. Shikamaru had to run off home or else his mother would scold him. So Naruto had to walk home alone. He saw the Ichiha again staring at a river. Naruto wondered what he was thinking since he barely talked. He walked up to him and greeted him. Getting no reply. What are you doing here? Naruto asked again, getting no response. He was starting to get kinda mad. I ask you something, Naruto said, but this time he actually said something back. What do you want? Sasuke asked. Nothing. Just wanted to see how you're doing. You know, talking is always better than staying silent, Naruto answered in a lower voice. Sasuke looked at him and then looked down. Don't want to talk. Just go away. Sasuke said in a higher voice trying to intimidate Naruto. Why not? I know how it feels to be alone. And talking with friends always made it better. Naruto said. You don't know anything, Sasuke replied back. Huh? I don't know anything. Seriously, get a grip. Staying alone will bring you nothing. I mean it. But yeah I guess I don't know anything. Naruto shakes his head and starts walking off. Seriously, why did I even try? I'll just go home and eat dinner for now. Naruto thought. Sasuke was thinking about what Naruto said but quickly shook it off. No one understands how I feel. I will get stronger alone and get revenge. Revenge. All Sasuke could think of. Killing his brother, the one who killed his own clan. Naruto then arrives home and prepares dinner. He made two shadow clones prepare dinner for him while he went to his room and laid down. He didn't want to let Sasuke suffer alone. But he couldn't bring him to talk to him. So he didn't know what to do now. When Naruto was alone, all he wanted was someone to talk to. So maybe he really doesn't know anything. It's been six years since he started training with his sensei. He learned a lot from him. How to be a shinobi and everything he needed to know. 
and today was his last day of training with his sensei. Finally, tomorrow he's graduating and he's going to become a real shinobi. The academy was pretty easy for Naruto. The stuff they taught there, he already knew. They only taught him the low-level jutsus that he also already knew. Tojutsu was also pretty easy after a few months of training only on Tojutsu. Even though he was bored, he still loved the academy. He had friends there and the teachers were nice too. Two years of only Tojutsu training had done him good. He did use shadow clones to master the three elementals. He mastered two of the earth releases and two of the wind release ones. Lightning release was a bit tricky. He did train long enough to make it useful in battle, but he still didn't master it completely. It was a copy of the original Jutsu after all. Enzo and Naruto were getting ready for their final spar. Naruto, take off your chakra weights. You need to get used to your body without them Tenzo said. Naruto was surprised by this. He was told to never take them off. Even if he wasn't training. He even forgot how his body felt without the weights. But he realized why he told him to take them off so he did just that. Naruto then as soon as he takes off his weights immediately notices the difference. He felt so much lighter. He jumped higher. He was faster. He felt as though he was the fastest. He got a bit too cocky, forgetting how strong his sensei is. Very well. Start. Tenzo declares. Naruto immediately rushed at him. Taking his weights off seemed to have made him cockier. But then he saw the difference between himself and his sensei. He threw punches left and right, but none seemed to hit him. His sensei dodged every one of his punches seemingly easily. The moment Naruto noticed that he jumped back. Heh, I guess it won't be that easy. Naruto then starts thinking about what to do while he dodges Tenzo. He was trying to come up with a strategy but couldn't focus too much because of Tenzo rushing him. Thinking won't do much then huh? Naruto thought as he then fully focused on the fight. He realized he couldn't strategize unconsciously and trying to come up with a strategy to fight his sensei right now would only slow him down. Naruto throws in kicks, punches, everything he had available, but they all either got dodged or blocked. He realized just how much he had to train to overcome this level. He knows how weak he is and how much more he has to train to get stronger. To become the strongest. Naruto then rushes at Tenzo even harder trying to land a punch. A kick. Anything. But everything seemed futile. This frustrated Naruto more than he thought. He got even more aggressive. His style was still really good for an academy student. It barely had any openings Tenzo could exploit even after he got so aggressive. It seemed immature of Naruto to get so frustrated and that doing so in battle could prove fatal, but this was different. Even though it was more aggressive it still didn't leave any openings. It seemed reckless and dumb to an opponent which confused them. Tenzo thought he saw an opening. You've got ways to go Naruto. Leaving an opening like that as soon as Tenzo was about to exploit that opening he realized. He got tricked by an academy student. Naruto quickly dodged Tenzo and was about to land a kick. Tenzo smiled. Proud of his student. To think Naruto, an academy student, would trick him. He just laughed a little and then quickly grabbed his leg and pushed him to the ground. Naruto then stood up exhausted. As soon as he stood up he fell again. The spar had gone on for a few hours and it drained him. Tenzo then laughed a bit more loudly. Good job, Naruto. Yet again you impress me. Really Naruto asked excitedly. Yes. Well done. For that, I will treat you to Raymond Tenzo replied. Let's go. Naruto shouted. For the past few years, Tenzo hadn't gone on any missions as an Anbu and hadn't done any Anbu work. He was only focused on training Naruto as ordered by the third Hokage. Since Naruto is finally going to become a genin he thought that he won't need his sensei anymore. He'll be busy on missions and also have another sensei. He was worried about Naruto. He was also sad that he won't get to see Naruto as often. They grew closer and have a really good teacher-student relationship. But he knew that he had nothing to worry about. With Naruto finally becoming a genin he plans on continuing his Anbu work. After finishing their meal they went on top of the Hokage rock. Naruto knew that this was the last time he would see his sensei in a long time. He knows his sensei will continue his Anbu work, so he will be really busy. It upset him, but there wasn't really anything he could do at the moment. So I guess this is a goodbye. Naruto said in a low voice. For now, Naruto. I trust you to become an awesome shinobi. I know you can do it. And don't worry, whenever I have time, I will come and meet you Tenzo replied. Tenzo then smiled and then said in a sarcastic voice. Alright then Naruto, better get ready for tomorrow. It is a big day, after all, you better not fail. Tenzo knew without a doubt he would pass the academy test. Naruto then chuckled. Hi. I will become strong too. Stronger than you Naruto declared. Tenzo then laughed. Yes, I know you will. They then nodded at each other and both left. Naruto heads home. It had gotten dark so he wanted to get a good night's sleep for tomorrow. Tomorrow he's finally going to become a real ninja. Naruto woke up earlier this time. He quickly ate breakfast and went out. He went out for a run. 
he ran at full speed around the village to see how fast he could go. Since he's finally not using the weights he wanted to test how much faster he got. And it was by a lot. But he still had ways to go. He knew that because of the spar with his sensei. He knew he still had to train a lot more and way harder than he did before if he wanted to become the strongest. After taking a small break he went to the academy. It was earlier than usual so not everyone was in class. Since his friends weren't there either he sat alone. As per usual, the fangirls were fangirling over Sasuke. He still thought about what Sasuke said. About him not understanding anything. Naruto thought he understood how Sasuke felt, but that wasn't the case. A few minutes passed and his friends all came. Naruto sat next to Shikamaru and Choji. Kiba and Shino also sat together behind them. It was pretty loud until Aruka came in. The students were nervous about the exams. Some were also not worried about it, confident that they would easily pass. As soon as Aruka came in the class was silent. Aruka greeted the students and they greeted him back. Aruka has them prepare for the first exam. The written exam. Mizuki, Aruka's assistant, handed out the papers. Naruto had always gone for the average score. But since it was the last day, he wanted to get the perfect score. Yesterday Aruka reviewed the transformation jutsu in which Naruto also got a perfect score. He answered all the questions asked on the paper. After the time was up Mizuki picked the papers up. Some were upset, some were not. The test was hard for a few but easy for others. For your final exam, you must each generate a clone, Iruka said, and then continued after a moment of silence. Wait here until your name is called, and then come next door. After a few got their name called, it was finally Naruto's turn. His friends wished him luck to which Naruto thanked them. He goes next door. Iruka and Mizuki were sitting in front of a table full of leaf headbands. Naruto was excited. Iruka told Naruto to show his shadow clone. But what happened after wasn't what he expected. Since Naruto was an overall average student he expected one shadow clone, but what actually happened was surprising. First Naruto didn't even use hand signs, and second, there were multiple and solid clones. Iruka immediately passed him. As the exams were over, Iruka congratulated everyone. Everyone in his class had passed. After the students congratulated each other and celebrated, they all went home. Naruto was about to walk home, but he thought he'd stay outside for a bit. Home alone was boring after all. He laid down on the Hokage's rock looking at the dark sky. The sky was clear, with no clouds. You could clearly see the beautiful stars. Naruto loved to just stay and look at the sky. But for a moment he was interrupted. He saw someone jump right above his head going into the forest. He didn't see who it was, but he did notice he was in quite a hurry. Naruto decided to follow him and see what's up. It didn't take a lot for Naruto to catch up to him, but when he did he saw someone familiar. Mizuki. Mizuki was actually quite nice to Naruto, so he thought that Mizuki was actually a kind person. Mizuki, what's going on? Naruto asked. Naruto also noticed the scroll on his hand and thought of a theory about what's actually happening. The theory was that Mizuki stole the scroll and is now on the run. But he still didn't want to believe that as he genuinely believed Mizuki was a kind person. Mizuki decided to stop. Ah, so it's you, Naruto. The devil himself Mizuki said. Naruto hated that word. He always wondered why he was always called a devil. But hearing those words towards him, Naruto knew he wasn't a kind person, at least no one who uses those words towards a child is. What are you doing Mizuki? Naruto asked again. Mizuki then started laughing. Don't you see, Naruto? I'm stealing this scroll and in exchange, I will be granted power. Naruto then knew for sure what that scroll was and realized what's happening. Aren't you a leaf ninja? No, if you're willing to betray your village then you aren't a ninja. You're just a failure. Naruto said preparing to fight Mizuki. Oh? The devil is getting ready to fight. Mizuki then started laughing but then continued. Naruto, do you know why everyone calls you a devil? Why does everyone hate you? Mizuki asks. Naruto then stopped for a moment but then told him to continue. Because. You Naruto, you're the devil fox who attacked the village 12 years ago. Mizuki then started laughing again. Naruto was shocked. He always wondered why everyone called him a devil. He even came up with theories as to why. He did come up with the theory that the fox was inside him, but he didn't want to believe it. This theory seemed the most believable, but he just didn't want to accept it's true. After a few moments of Mizuki laughing and Naruto getting his head straight, Mizuki decided to attack Naruto. Naruto's thoughts were all over the place, but then he tossed them all aside. He was already kinda prepared for it although he didn't want to believe it. Although he didn't have any proof, the idea was still there. Mizuki was rushing Naruto, but Naruto easily dodged him. That speed was nothing compared to his senseis. Both of them on the ground staring at each other until suddenly another Naruto came out of the ground about to catch Mizuki. Mizuki was really shocked at this, but his instincts allowed him to move away. He really didn't expect Naruto to know any, he was the most average after all. 
Heh, I guess it won't be that easy, Naruto said. You. You devil. Why don't you care? You're the demon fox, the one who killed countless people Mizuki yelled. Naruto said nothing. He was thinking nothing other than bringing the scroll back and defeating Mizuki. He didn't let it bother him what Mizuki was saying. Mizuki got pissed at this and carelessly started attacking Naruto. Naruto dodged and countered his punches. Mizuki managed to get a few punches in and started rushing more aggressively. Naruto then used it to his advantage and disappeared in a puff of smoke. Mizuki got even more furious and turned around to see Naruto preparing a jutsu. With one hand sign Naruto takes a deep breath, compresses that breath, and releases it in a large crushing sphere of wind chakra. Mizuki barely dodged it, but it got his leg. He managed to hide, but when Naruto was about to pursue him he stopped when he was attacked from below. It looked like a combination of an earth jutsu and soft physique modification. But then suddenly Naruto was put into a jinjutsu. Naruto fell under his trap. As soon as he released the jinjutsu he was being attacked by a puppet holding a sword. He was already about to get hit and he couldn't dodge it. Shit, I have to use this then. Although not perfect, it will help me get out of this. Naruto thought. No hand signs necessary. In one moment Naruto was surrounded by dark red lightning, which enhanced his speed and reflexes greatly. He got the idea of this jutsu when he read the encounter of the fourth Hokage in the Rakage. He read that he used something like this so Naruto created something similar. It was far off from the original, but he knew he could train to improve on it. As soon as he activated the lightning jutsu he dodged the puppet and was about to find Mizuki. He could finally use sensing abilities, although they were only for a few meters. Naruto found Mizuki again and was about to attack him again. Mizuki was furious. Naruto countered everything Mizuki had. All his plans were ruined because of Naruto. He was so infuriated that he blindly attacked Naruto. Naruto then encased his arm in rock, and taking advantage of Mizuki's recklessness, Naruto did a direct hit which put Mizuki down. This took longer than it should have, Naruto said tiredly. Naruto then notices the scroll near the unconscious Mizuki. Hmm, let's see why Mizuki risked his life for Naruto thought and opened the scroll. The first jutsu in that scroll was the one he already knew. Boring, Naruto said. After looking at a few more he noticed something. The one jutsu that his idol is famous for. His eyes lit up, but he then senses someone coming. He quickly copies what is said on the scroll about that jutsu and drops it. The one who arrived was Iruka. Naruto. What are you doing here? Iruka asked with a confused face. I saw Mizuki running with the scroll, so I followed him and defeated him, Naruto said in a cheery voice. His clothes were in a worse shape than he was though. Iruka then takes a second to let that information sink in and then asks. You defeated Mizuki. Wait, you didn't look at the scroll, did you? It was hard but yay, I did. Naruto then laughs, ignoring the second question Iruka asked. Credit was given to Naruto for returning the scroll safely. After Iruka and Naruto gave their report to the third Hokage, he thanked them and told them they could leave. Iruka was about to leave, but noticed Naruto staying. Naruto, come I'll treat you to some ramen too, Iruka said. Go on without me. I want to talk with Jiji a bit Naruto said with a low voice. Iruka noticed that there was something different about Naruto, so he decided to leave them. Hiruzen already knew what he wanted to talk about. He saw everything on the crystal ball. But he didn't know what to tell him. He can't lie to him anymore. Jiji, am I really a devil? Is the nine-tailed fox actually sealed inside me? Naruto asked in a saddened voice. No, no of course not. You're just the same Naruto. Yes, you have a fox sealed inside you, but you're still the same Naruto. A normal human which I love hears and replied back. Naruto was in deep thoughts. He was really happy to hear those words, but was still upset. Jiji, why was it sealed inside me? Naruto asked again. He knew why already but just wanted to hear his Jiji say it. It was to save the village, Naruto. It was sealed by the fourth Hokage. If he didn't seal it inside you then it would have gone in a rampage killing hundreds of people. Hiruzen replied back again. He noticed that that made Naruto feel better. If it was for the village, Naruto felt as if he could do anything. Even if it meant containing a demon fox. Hmm. Jiji, are there books about the nine-tailed fox or books related to it? Naruto then asks again. He wanted to research everything about the beast inside of him. Hiruzen then stands up and goes to a shelf of books and scrolls. Of course there are. You can take them but be sure to return them Hiruzen said, pointing at the books. Naruto then smiled. By the way Jiji, I took a look into the Forbidden Scroll, Naruto said in embarrassment rubbing the back of his head. The Forbidden Scroll was a scroll that was forbidden to use. The first Hokage himself was the one who wrote the Forbidden Jutsu in the scroll. They were forbidden due to how much chakra they cost and if anyone with not enough chakra tried to use those dyes. But Naruto is someone who has an abnormal amount of chakra due to his genes. Oh? Well did you find anything interesting? Asked a curious Hiruzen. Naruto then smiles a little at that question and says well, I did find this one. Showing the paper on which he wrote the jutsu in. 
Pirazin was shocked, but then again thought it was to be expected. Naruto, just be careful. It is a forbidden jutsu for a reason. Hirazin said. He didn't have any doubts that he wouldn't learn it though. He was his son after all. Naruto then smiles again. Hi, Jiji Naruto says while taking the books and scrolls about the nine-tailed fox and stuff related to him. Thank you again, Naruto said while leaving. No problem. I trust you after all. Hirazin said in a somewhat lower voice. He then sat on his chair again and continued his paperwork. Naruto had just gotten up fully refreshed from exhaustion. It was midday so Naruto slept longer than he wanted to. Yesterday had been a tiresome night and he had found out a terrible secret about himself, well, about the demon that sealed inside of him. He was really upset but he did get over it after talking to his Jiji. Since it was for his village he really didn't care about a demon. He felt like he could do anything about his village even if it meant containing a demon. As he stood up yawning he noticed the books and scroll he got yesterday. Alright, since I don't have anything to do today besides preparing the ninja registration form, I'll learn everything there is to know about you. And then there is you. Naruto thought looking at another scroll was kinda exciting. He quickly ate lunch and made a few shadow clones. First, he sent one clone to prepare the ninja registration form and made the other clones learn the basics of the working of the jutsu he had written down yesterday, and he, the original, would read about the demon inside him. He made 25 clones learn about the jutsu. Since the shadow clones had a harder time learning new stuff. Yesterday he was in such a hurry copying the scroll that he really had no idea what he wrote. He wrote it unconsciously due to not wanting to be seen by Aruka, and it was faster this way. The jutsu was called the Horation. There was a little stuff written about it. First, he noticed that jutsu was edited and improved by the fourth Hokage. The jutsu was created by the second Hokage, but improved by the fourth Hokage. Naruto noticed the use of the special kunai. The special kunai differ from a standard shinobi kunai in that they have three blades instead of one, and the handle serves as the marker for the fourth Hokage's teleportation ability. To use the Horatian Jutsu one had to mark a target with a technique formula. The formula is applied with a single touch which can't be removed even after the target dies. By entering a dimensional void, the user can instantly teleport to a technique formula's location whenever they please, regardless of distance. Anything that the user is holding, contacting, or that is linked with their chakra will teleport with them. It is said that anyone marked with the technique formula is essentially sentenced to death. Naruto thought that with the use of his lightning jutsu, he could make Horatian even better and faster. He was still upset that his lightning didn't increase his physical parameters as much as he wanted to. The Rakage's lightning mode did so on a much greater scale. But he was still proud he was able to replicate it, even though at a much lower level than the originals. The Horatian Jutsu could be used without hand signs if Naruto trained long enough to master it. Naruto sent one more clone to order a few special kunai. He got them right away since the fourth Hokage used to order them there. After getting back home with the special kunai, Naruto poofed. When the original got the memories of the clone he made another 25 clones to get used to using these special kunai. They weighed more than the normal ones and getting used to fighting with them did no harm. It was getting late and Naruto had finally finished reading all about the demon inside of him. It was quite a lot he had learned about him and his kind. He read that there were eight other demons, or beasts as it was written, like the one inside him. There were nine tailed beasts in total, and all had unique appearances and different numbers of tails. The one inside him had nine tails and was also the most terrifying, but also the one with the most chakra of them all. He also read that there were other people like him who had a tailed beast sealed inside of them. They were called Jinchiriki. The tailed beasts were seen as monsters, demons, mindless beasts, and were really hated. That hatred went on to their Jinchiriki which he finally understood why he was hated and called a demon by everyone in the village. The first Hokage had gathered all the tailed beasts and suppressed them with his wood style. He had also given them away to other villages to avoid war. As Naruto read this he was amazed. He really gave such a powerful being away like a pet thought Naruto. The first Hokage had kept the nine tails and sealed him inside of his wife. Naruto then noticed something. The last name of the first Hokage's wife. Yuzumaki. He also read that the first Hokage's wife whose name was Mido, was the first Nine Tails Jinchiriki. After Mido, the second Nine Tails Jinchiriki was Kashina Yuzumaki. And after Kashina, it was Naruto. Naruto noticed that so far only the Yuzumaki were his Jinchiriki. Naruto knew that the Yuzumaki was a famous clan, but was later killed. He never knew why they were killed and why he was the only survivor so far he knew. He barely knew anything about the Yuzumaki. Naruto then read about the different kinds of tailed beasts, their special abilities, and where they are located. He failed to understand why the nine tailed attacked the village. Was it really necessary to kill countless people and destroy countless buildings just to avoid being sealed inside a human? Was it really that bad? If that's the case then I'll do my best for him to be comfortable as much as possible. But would it really help? Was being sealed really the reason he was killed? 
The reason he's evil. Is he really evil? Naruto began to question everything. He was puzzled by the situation. He didn't want to think someone is evil just because someone said he is. He at least wanted to talk to this demon before he came to the conclusion that he's just pure evil. He read about how the Jinchuriki can talk to the tailed beast. He wanted to try that as well. He made all the other shadow clones poof. He felt all their memories come back to him. Naruto shook his head and sat down. He closed his eyes. He sat down for a few minutes but nothing happened. When Naruto started concentrating even harder he felt something different. He opened his eyes and saw himself in a corridor. It looked like he was in a sewer. As he was looking around he heard a growl. Naruto immediately knew who and where he was. He walked straight and turned left. After a moment of walking, he finally arrived. Before him, he saw a big cage. Come closer, said the nine tails growling. As Naruto went one step closer, the nine tails tried to stab him with his nails. I want to eat you. But this damn seal. Won't let me, he said growling even harder. Naruto understood that he was trying to scare him and it was working. It certainly was creepy. So. You're the nine tails, huh? Naruto said. You came here yourself. You know where you are and you certainly know who I am, kid. Responded the nine tails. Naruto then laughed a bit. You really are scary, nine tails. Naruto noticed he flinched a little hearing that. Hmm, it feels weird calling you that, and it doesn't seem you like it either. So what do you prefer I call you? Naruto asked. The Nine Tails was shocked at hearing this. He has hated humans for only seeing him as a power source. A demon. Evil incarnate. No one had ever asked him for his name. What do you care, kid? He then asked. Well, you're inside me and you do already know my name, so it makes sense for me to know yours, Naruto replied. The Nine Tails started laughing. You're the first human to ever ask me that. Fine, since you asked, it's Kurama he said. His hate for humans was still the same, but he still had a little amount of respect for the human child. Kurama knows what Naruto thinks, what his intentions are, and what he feels. In his point of view, Naruto wasn't that bad, but he was still a human. The child of the one who sealed him nonetheless. Kurama huh? I like it. So, Kurama. I'd like to ask you something if I'm allowed Naruto said. Kurama was again surprised by this child. He wasn't as bad as the previous Jinchuriki he had, plus he gave off a familiar feeling. Sure, kid. It's not like I have anything else to do, he replied. Thank you. Straight to the case then, why did you attack the Hidden Leaf Village 12 years ago? Naruto asked. He wanted to know what his intentions were at the time. Garama sighed. He first didn't want to admit that he was controlled, but he didn't want to lie either. A damn it had controlled me with their damn visual prowess. No matter what everyone else may think, I don't like pointless destruction. Naruto was glad but he didn't show it. He was in deep thought on who it was that controlled him. But who did it? The only Ichiha who was capable of controlling you was the legendary Ichiha. But he is dead after all. Naruto said and then continued. Is the one who controlled you still alive? All the Ichiha were killed except two after all. I don't know, but I don't think he was a leaf ninja. So, he's probably still alive. Kurama replied. He hasn't had a real conversation in a long time so this did him good. He might be a threat. Someone powerful enough to control someone like you and use you to cause such destruction. I wonder who that could be. Naruto said, talking to himself. Anyways, thank you. It was nice talking to you. You got anything you want to say? Naruto asked. Hiramu lied down and started sleeping, giving no answer. Naruto smiled and went out. As he came out he realized how late it had become and the mess he made with all the books and scrolls. He made a few shadow clones and went into his room tired. He rubbed his stomach and smiled. A moment later the shadow clones were done cleaning up and so he started sleeping. Naruto wakes up stretching and yawning. He eats breakfast and heads out. He did some exercises first and then trained with his new kunais. After a few hours of training, Naruto heads back home to take a shower and get ready to hand in the ninja registration form. He gave it to the third hokage and sat on a chair in front of him. Naruto then sensed someone coming. He looked at the door and saw it was opening slowly. Naruto then saw a young boy charging at the third hokage with a shuriken in his hand and yelling fight me. Old geezer. Naruto was about to stop him but then saw him fall down. He laughed a little at that dumb assassination attempt. He knew or rather guessed who he was. The young boy however noticed that laugh and grabbed his shirt. I know you are the one who set a trap. He yelled. You it. You fell on your own feet you fool. Naruto said, grabbing the young boy's hand and removing it. The young boy was still trying to grab his shirt, but Naruto didn't let him as he grabbed his hand a little harder. Let his hand go. He's the grandson of the third Hokage said a quite tall man who seemed to be a member. Naruto noticed the smirk the young boy was giving. This annoyed him a little. Naruto then grabbed his shirt. Like I give a damn. You better not touch me again. Naruto said and pushed him on the floor. The young boy looked shocked. 
anyone else treated him with kindness the minute they found out he's the third Hokage's grandson, but Naruto didn't. After that Naruto headed out. He was finished with his work so he wanted to go home for now. He did however notice someone following him. What do you want? Naruto asked, getting no response. You aren't fooling anyone with that, you know. He, impressive. You saw through my disguise. I heard about you. I'll make you my boss. Please train me. Said the young boy. Huh? Why would I make you my student? Naruto asked. Come on, please boss. Please. The young boy continues begging. Um, why do you want to train in the first place? Naruto asked. Because I want to become a Hokage. Then finally people will see me for who I am and not some grandson of a Hokage. Naruto looked at him with a confused face. What do you mean? Grandpa named me after the village. My name is Konohimaru. Even though everyone knows my name. No one calls me that. All they see is the Hokage's grandson. Konohimaru said, looking down. I'm sick of that, so that's why I want the Hokage's title. Idiot. If you want to be acknowledged then become a strong and respectable shinobi first. There is no way you're becoming a Hokage. Not before you beat me. Naruto said look at Konohamaru's face. His eyes widened. I finally found you, young lord. The shinobi from before said look at Naruto with disgusted eyes. That demon bratty thought. Those eyes again Naruto thought annoyed. The shinobi was grabbing Konohamaru. Young master, let's go home. I'm your easiest shortcut to becoming Hokage the shinobi said while struggling to pull Konohamaru. Let me go. Konohamaru yelled back. Please young master. If you hang out with trash like him, you'll become stupid the shinobi said, still struggling. What did you just call me? Naruto was pissed off at that man's comment. This has nothing to do with you, d I mean young man, as soon as the shinobi finished that sentence he was kicked in the face and fell down a couple of meters away. As he stood up as if nothing had happened they were gone. Damn it. Didn't know he was this experienced, but I guess it's expected when you train with an anbu. Naruto had picked up Konohimaru and ran away. Konohimaru was looking at Naruto shocked and his eyes wide opened. He didn't even see Naruto use the shadow clone that appeared behind his tutor. Plus that speed and that awesome lighting surrounding him. So awesome was everything Konohimaru could think of. I'm sorry Konohimaru. I acted in the heat of the moment, Naruto said as he let Konohimaru down and rubbed his head laughing a little. Don't worry, Nai-chan. He shouldn't have called you that anyway. Konohimaru said. Naruto looked at him surprised by how he called him. He was also really happy. But wow, I have ways to go if I want to surpass you and beat you, Konohimaru said. He, you sure do. You better train hard, harder than you ever had. Naruto said. Yay yay, stop lecturing me. Because from now on. You're my rival. Konohimaru declares. Naruto smiles. Sorry, but starting tomorrow I'm taking my first step as being a shinobi, but one day I'll fight you for the Hokage title. I'll be looking for it, Konohimaru Naruto said, giving a thumbs up with a big smile on his face. It's the next day. As usual, Naruto was sitting next to Shikamaru and Choji in class. This was the day they were announcing teams and their sensei. Naruto pretty much knew who he was going to team up with, but he still preferred Shikamaru or Choji. Sadly though, they were going to be in a team with Ino. The famous Ino Shikacho formation. He pretty much guessed who he was teaming with, but he still hated it. Holding back seemed to be a really bad idea now. My brilliant idea just backfired thought Naruto as he sighed. Iruka started announcing the teams. After a few teams were announced he said team 7. Haruno Sakura. Oh boy, here it comes, Naruto said. Uzumaki Naruto and Ichiha Sasuke Iruka finished. Great. I really do not like these two, especially her Naruto side. Naruto knew how important teamwork was and all that, but he just couldn't handle Sakura. The most annoying fangirl out of them all. Sasuke wasn't that bad. He's quiet and doesn't seem to cause any problems. After Iruka finished announcing their teams they had a lunch break, and after that, they would meet their sensei. It would make sense to get to know your teammates better during this lunch break, but Naruto just didn't see that happening. If he tried to approach them, they would just tell him to scream. After lunch break was over and every team had already met their sensei, Team 7 was the only one in the class. He's late was what all three were thinking. After waiting patiently, their new sensei had finally arrived. Naruto immediately recognized him. He remembered reading about him. Naruto was happy to get a sensei as good as him. This sensei had spiky silver hair often oriented to his left side and dark gray eyes. Well, his left eye was covered by the forehead protector. He also wore standard jonin clothes. Um, my first impression of you guys. Well, you don't seem so bad. The jonin said. Meet me at the rooftop he then said and left. After that Naruto also immediately left which Sasuke and Sakura didn't seem to have noticed. Naruto arrived right after his new sensei. Nice speed, jonin thought. He knew Naruto was trained by Tenzo, but he still didn't know Naruto's capabilities. Tenzo wouldn't tell him. Tenzo told him that he would find out for himself eventually. 
The others had also arrived. Sasuke was shocked to see Naruto be there before him. He didn't even see him run past them. Well, let's begin with introducing yourselves, Jonin said. What do you want to know? Sakura asked. Well, how about your likes and dislikes? Your dreams for the future and things like that the Jonin replied. Why don't you introduce yourself to us first, Sakura said. That might be the smartest thing you have said, Sakura. Naruto thought. Me? Alright. I'm Hada Kakashi. I have no intention of telling you my likes and dislikes. As for my dream. Hm I have a few hobbies. Kakashi said. Really didn't reveal much about himself Naruto thought. Now it's your turn, Kakashi said. Alright. My name is Yuzumaki Naruto. I like to train a lot and I like to eat ramen. What I dislike is people who hate on someone else without knowing anything about them. My dream is to become the strongest shinobi and then become the greatest hokage there was. As for my hobbies. Training I guess. Naruto said. Interesting Kakashi thought. Well, you're next, Kakashi said looking at the Ichiha. My name is Ichiha Sasuke. I dislike a lot of stuff and don't really like anything. I can't really call it a dream. But I have an ambition. The resurrection of my clan and. To kill a certain man. Sasuke said. Like I thought Kakashi thought. Revenge huh? Naruto thought. All Sakura could think of was how cool he was. Okay, and lastly the girl, Kakashi said looking at Sakura. My name is Hirano Sakura. The thing I like is. Well the person I like is. And um. My dream for the future. Um. Sakura said, screeching while looking at Sasuke. Girls of this age are more interested in love than ninjutsu Kakashi thought while shaking his head. And this is why I don't like her. Naruto thought. So far for the introductions. Tomorrow we'll start our duties as shinobi. We are going to do something with just the four of us. Kakashi said. What is it? Naruto asked. Survival training, Kakashi replied. The three genin looked at Kakashi with confusion. We are going to train. But not normal training. I'm going to be your opponent. Said Kakashi as he started laughing a little. What kind of training? Why are you laughing? Asked Sakura. Naruto looked confused as to why he was laughing, so he also asked. Oh, nothing, it's just that if I told you, you chicken out. Continued Kakashi. Chicken out? Why? Asked Sakura again. Of the 27 members of your graduating class, only 9 will actually be accepted as Genin Shinobi. The test we are about to perform has a 66% rate of failure, answered Kakashi. Naruto was now beginning to worry. A 66% rate of failure. I can't. I won't fail this. I will become the greatest Tokage, declared Naruto as he was holding his fist. Naruto then looked up and realized he said it out loud and just looked away. Kakashi looked at Naruto for a moment, but then continued. In any event, we'll meet tomorrow morning on the practice field so I can evaluate each of your skills and weaknesses. Make sure to go all out. Oh, and, I wouldn't eat breakfast if I were you. Unless you enjoy throwing up that is. Kakashi then gives a handout with details to the assignment to the three students and sunshine away. Breakfast. HMM thought Naruto as he was confused about that comment. Without paying attention Naruto picks the handout up and also sunshine away with confused looks by Sasuke and Sakura seeing Naruto's speed. Training field the next day. Kakashi had just arrived at the training field. A few hours too late. Good morning. Said Kakashi. You're late. Yelled Sakura. Kakashi just ignored her and put down a clock. I've set this alarm to go off at noon. Your challenge is to steal these two bells from me before it sets off. If you fail to get a bell then you'll be tied to that tree stump and are not allowed to eat lunch. Explained Kakashi. So that's why no we were implied to eat no breakfast. He thought about Naruto. After Kakashi saw the funny faces the students made, he continued. All you need is one single bell. Since there is three of you and only two bells, one of you is definitely getting tied to that tree stump and also head back to the academy. Naruto was pretty confused at this point but decided not to ask any questions for now. Come at me with intent to kill or else you don't stand a chance, said Kakashi. He, but that's too dangerous, said Sakura with a worried face. No, he's Jonin. A high rank ninja. Shouldn't be much of a problem to handle three students. Explained Naruto while shaking his head. Exactly. Now start. Declared Kakashi. Sakura and Sasuke went into hiding, while Naruto stayed in one place facing Kakashi. Well, I had high hopes for you, said Kakashi as he pulled a book out. Naruto put his hands behind his head and laughed a little. You know, I've been thinking since yesterday. Have you now? Said Kakashi, completely uninterested. Yes. I fail to understand how they expect three students to defeat the legendary copy ninja. Continued Naruto. Kakashi then looked at Naruto wondering if he had figured it out. He didn't respond back. I think I might have figured it out, but I'm not sure. If I did then it's pretty dumb for you to expect us to get along so soon. Especially with an arrogant guy like Sasuke. Said Naruto as he saw Kakashi change his facial expression. 
Then a poof was heard from a little far away from the direction Sasuke was hiding. As soon as the poof was heard Naruto shook his head. Kakashi was confused as to what that proof was. Seeing how Naruto reacted to the poof and that it came from where Sasuke was hiding, he got an idea as to what that was. So, what now? Asked Kakashi. Well, I'll do my best to show my skills. As soon as Naruto said that, something grabbed Kakashi's feet from underneath the ground. Immediately after that, another clone of Naruto was rushing with his arm encased in rock, aiming at a stunt Kakashi's stomach. Impressive thought Kakashi as he substituted with a log. That's not all thought Naruto as another clone, this time with dark red lightning surrounding him headed for the bells. He expected the substitution. And what is that lightning? Thought Kakashi. Naruto was really close to getting the bell as he was about to touch them, but then Kakashi just poofed. Of course thought Naruto. Kakashi then just came out of the forest. This all had happened while Naruto, the original, stayed in one place with his hands behind his head. As if he wasn't trying. Was hoping that would work thought Naruto. Naruto then pulled out a kunai. It was the special kunai he bought before. He had pretty much gotten used to fighting with them. Naruto T that's. Don't tell me you can use it. Said Kakashi, totally surprised with what Kuani Naruto was using. The same kunai, the man he respected, used. Well, we are about to find out aren't we, said Naruto as he started rushing at Kakashi. Naruto was trying to stab him, but Kakashi was easily able to predict and dodge him. Naruto went in for a punch on the face as Kakashi blocked. A clone appeared before Naruto kicking Kakashi and pushing him a couple of meters away. Another four shadow clones immediately rushed Kakashi. After a few moments, Kakashi had dispelled all the clones of Naruto. Naruto pulled out several of the special kunai and threw them all around Kakashi. So, you can use it. Said Kakashi, shocked at the young boy's skill. Naruto then again started rushing Kakashi. After throwing in a few punches, Kakashi was about to counter. Naruto then without Kakashi noticing activated the dark red lightning mode and sunshine to the nearest special kunai and then deactivated it. Leaving a red flash behind making it seem as if he had teleported. Kakashi was beyond shocked at this point as he was looking at Naruto. Then suddenly a clone of Naruto came from the underground again, but this time surrounded by that lightning. Kakashi couldn't react in time due to the shock that a student was using his sensei's main jutsu. The clone barely managed to get a bell. The clone threw the bell at the original and poofed. Naruto then smiled as he saw the shocked face of the legendary copy ninja. How did you learn Horatian, Naruto? Asked Kakashi, shocked. I didn't, said Naruto while he rubbed the back of his head. What? Asked Kakashi again, now confused. I only used the kunais to confuse you. When I teleported I actually used the lightning mode to shunshin to the nearest kunai. It worked though huh, said Naruto as he then laughed a little. Kakashi was really shocked at his skills. A student managed to trick him and steal his bell. And what is that lightning mode you used? Is it really what I think it is? Asked Kakashi. Yep. Although on a much lower scale, replied Naruto. And that poof earlier? Asked Kakashi again. Flash back to a few minutes ago, Naruto's clone went to where Sasuke was hiding. He wanted to convince Sasuke to work together. Listen, you can't defeat him alone, said Naruto while he hid near Sasuke. Shut up. I alone will get those bells, replied Sasuke. Look, I know you're a proud Ichiha and all that, but if you want to become a shinobi then we have to work together, continued Naruto. You're a clone right? Asked Sasuke to which Naruto nodded. Good, said Sasuke as he stabbed Naruto with a kunai. Great, now I have to find a new hiding place. Flash back end, I see. Well, you can wait here I guess. And don't you dare eat lunch ordered Kakashi. Oh, don't worry I don't need to, replied Naruto. So, you've also already eaten lunch? Asked Kakashi. Of course. Important meal of the day, so much so I was going to risk throwing up, answered Naruto. Kakashi smiled as he headed out to test out the other two students. Sasuke and Sakura were really shocked at the skill Naruto displayed. He actually managed to steal a bell from an elite jonin. They were stuck in one place waiting for Kakashi to drop his guard. What is that? How did he move so fast? And that power? How is he so strong? Thought Sasuke was jealous of the power Naruto had just shown. Sakura was amazed and shocked at the same time. She thought Naruto was just an average student. She never got to talk to him so she had no idea who he was. Maybe I should have gone with him thought Sasuke. Sasuke then heard Sakura scream. He got her. Sasuke then looked back as he noticed Kakashi behind him. Without saying a word Sasuke decided to attack. He threw shuriken at Kakashi, to which he managed to dodge to his right. The shuriken Sasuke threw though that set off the trap Sasuke prepared before. The trap shot a few kunais in Kakashi's direction. Kakashi realizing the trap also managed to dodge them. Sasuke went behind Kakashi as he did a spinning sidekick to which Kakashi managed to block with his left arm. Kakashi then grabbed Sasuke's leg with his right hand. Sasuke tried to punch with his right hand, but Kakashi also managed to grab his hand. 
Kakashi had now grabbed both his right hand and his left leg. Sasuke then used his right leg trying to kick Kakashi in the head, but Kakashi had also blocked that. At that moment, Sasuke was so close to getting the remaining bell. He just barely touched it as Kakashi then let go of Sasuke and jumped away. After a few hand signs, Sasuke said fire style. Fireball jutsu as a hot ball of fire came out of Sasuke's mouth seemingly hitting Kakashi. Sasuke was now confused as to where Kakashi was. Behind me. Above. Thought Sasuke. Below you, said Kakashi as he grabbed Sasuke's foot and pulled him underground, only leaving his head out. Kakashi then left Sasuke there. Sakura had just woken up from the Jinjutsu Kakashi had put her in. As she walked around, she finally arrived at where Sasuke was. Oh no. Sasuke's head has been severed screamed Sakura to the top of her lungs and fainted. Sasuke was confused as to what just happened and got out. A moment later Sakura got up to see Sasuke up and alive again. She screamed Sasuke, you're alive and hugged him tightly. Yes, I'm fine. You can let me go now, said Sasuke. Sasuke then stood up and went in Kakashi's direction as he said, time's almost up. I already almost got the bell, but I will get it next time. Sakura was worried. Naruto had already gotten a bell somehow, and Sasuke was close to getting it too. At this rate, she was going to be the one left out. She was about to say something, but noticed that Sasuke was already gone. A moment later, the alarm rang. Damn it. I was close to cursing Sasuke. A few minutes later as everyone gathered, the three students sat down and before them was Kakashi. The Kakashi sighed. A student was able to get his bell and trick. He was pretty upset about that. You all fail, declared Kakashi. Shocked faces came from Sasuke and Sakura. Naruto had managed to get a bell so at least he should pass. But he's failing too. But Naruto managed to get a bell, said Sakura. Naruto knew why he was failing but didn't bother explaining because Kakashi was about to. This test. Did you ever stop and wonder what the point of this test was? If not that then, why were the teams divided, asked Kakashi. He saw Sakura's confused face and then continued. Obviously not. Because you never stopped to think why there were teams, you missed the point of this test from the beginning, which is also why you failed. The point of this test was. Teamwork, said Kakashi. What? So, if I had accepted Naruto's offer I would have passed. Thought Sasuke was pissed off at this. But, because Naruto brought off a good point I will give Naruto and Sasuke a chance. Because they were the ones who showed the most skill, said Kakashi as he tied Sakura up on the tree stump. If you two can follow simple orders and eat lunch without giving any to Sakura, then you two will pass, declared Kakashi. With that Kakashi leaves the training field. Sakura was pretty upset. She had guessed this was coming. At least I'm helping Sasuke pass, no matter how little help that is thought Sakura as her stomach growled. After countless growls from Sakura's stomach, Naruto decided to step in and feed her. What are you doing? Stop, didn't you hear? Said Sakura. Just eat. I already ate so I'm not hungry anyway, replied Naruto. Wait, what do you mean you already ate? Asked Sasuke. By that, I mean that I ate breakfast, answered Naruto. But didn't Sakura was about to continue but was interrupted by Naruto. I know what he said, but he only implied to not eat. He didn't order us. And why would anyone order you to skip an important meal of the day, said Naruto shaking his head, but then feeding her. After that Sasuke also offered his lunch. Sakura was screaming about how happy she was that she was about to be fed by her crush, but that all came to a drain because of one guy. Naruto. No need. As I said I already ate while well, you haven't eaten since yesterday, said Naruto, and then Sasuke continued eating his lunch. Sakura was furious at what Naruto had just done and yelled, but stopped as she then thought a little. Sasuke hadn't eaten so he needs all the food he can get right now. After one bite of Naruto's lunch a big puff of smoke appeared and out of it came Kakashi saying, you all. Pass. Naruto had thought this was what would have happened. He wouldn't just pass us for not giving lunch to someone. We all pass. But why? Asked Sakura, shocked. You three have just taken a giant step forward. Up until now, all any of you have done is listen unquestioningly to everything I say. Like mindless, little drones, said Kakashi. He looked at the three students for a moment and then continued. A true shinobi seeks for the hidden meaning within meanings. In a ninja's world, those who violate the rules and fail to follow orders are lower than scum. However, those who do not care for and support their comrades are even lower than that. The three students, now Jenin, looked at their sensei and how cool he was. That's all. Team 7, your first mission will commence tomorrow, said Kakashi with a thumbs up. Now let's go home. Almost two months have passed since Naruto became a real ninja. Team 7 had gone on countless D-rank missions. And they had grown tired of it. During the two months, Naruto wore the chakra weights and added more weight every now and then. He trained every time he had the chance to. He had also managed to pull off the Horation with the help of Shadow Clones. But it was still really useless in battle. He couldn't use it efficiently, and it took way too long to pull off. 
but it was still progress in his eyes. Team 7 was coming back after finishing another tier rank mission and ready to take on another mission. Now the next missions for Team 7 will be him. Babysitting. Run errands to the neighboring village. Said Hiruzen. The three genin were getting tired of this but didn't want to say anything, except one. Jij Lore third, I think we are all ready for at least a C rank mission. We have finished countless D ranks without fail, and I'm sure we qualify for a C rank. Ask Kakashi Sensei too, said Naruto. Hmm. Kakashi, do you think that your team is ready for a C rank? Asked Hiruzen. Kakashi then looked at the three young genin and said, yes, Lord Third. After a moment of silence, Hiruzen finally decided that he would give them a C rank mission. It's decided then, said Hiruzen. Aruka didn't even know what to say. Hiruzen already made a decision so he just stood quietly. Also proud of his students. I will permit you to a C rank mission. The protection of a certain individual. Please invite him in, ordered Hiruzen. An old man came in through the door. He was gray-haired, with a large beard and dark eyes. He wore a sleeveless v-neck shirt with an obi, pants, and a pair of sandals. He also carried a towel around his neck and wore a pointed hat on his head. He was drunk and had a bottle of liquor with him. What's going on here? It's a joke, right? Those wet-nosed brats aren't really ninjas, right? Naruto then looked at him. Observing the old man and then deciding not to say anything. He was still really excited for the first C-rank mission. Azuna then getting no reaction says, I am Tazuna, a bridge builder. Until I am safely back in my own country where I'll be completing my next bridge, you'll all be expected to protect me, even if it costs you your lives. Alright. My name is Naruto Uzumaki. Let's go on our first C-rank mission said Naruto excitedly. Team 7 and Tazuna were leaving the village. For a moment Naruto stopped and suddenly looked at the left side up on the trees. Naruto didn't see anything unusual, but he definitely knew he sensed something for a moment. Seeing as there was nothing there Naruto caught up with the rest of the team. Sakura, Tazuna, and Kakashi were chatting about the land of waves. After a few more moments of walking and after passing a small puddle of water, something happened. Naruto realized too late. Two shinobi came out of the puddle and attacked Kakashi with a chain. They wrapped Kakashi with a chain and sliced him up. First one, they said. The genin were terrified. They just saw their sensei get sliced up. Naruto lost focus for a moment and the two shinobi appeared behind him. Reacting fast, Naruto used the substitution jutsu and appeared behind them. Naruto quickly made a shadow clone and threw it at them. The two shinobi slashed it with their metal claws they had in one of their hands. Naruto giving them no room to react and move, rushed through the smoke the shadow clone made and with his arm encased in rock, tried to punch them. The enemy blocked with the metal claw he had, but it was crushed due to the force of Naruto's punch. He wasn't holding back. Immediately after crushing the metal claw, Naruto did a spinning hook kick that landed on the other shinobi's face. The two shinobi were both on the ground, and after one look at each other, they rushed at Tazuna completely ignoring Naruto. Naruto was about to jump in and help him, but then stopped when he noticed someone else jump in. Kakashi. Kakashi sensei. Said Naruto, shocked. He then looked at where Kakashi was sliced and saw small pieces of wood. Of course, I should have known that. I was too shocked, and that clouded my mind completely thought Naruto cursing himself. So this is a real battle. Kakashi then grabbed the two shinobi by their necks in a flash, rendering them unconscious. Good job, Naruto, said Kakashi. Sasuke was pretty pissed now. He wanted to jump in and fight, but Naruto didn't let him. He was faster than me. Thought Sasuke as he clenched his fist. Sasuke, don't worry. Mr. Tazuna, said Kakashi. Wah. What is it? Asked Tazuna. Our attackers appear to be level ninjas of the Karigakur clan Miss Ninjas. They are shinobi renowned for their willingness to fight on until their goal is achieved even at the cost of their own lives. Obviously, they were watching and waiting for us, said Kakashi. If you knew all that, why did you even let those creeps attack you? Asked Izuna. I could have killed them at any time. But. I wanted to find out who their real target was. Said Kakashi. What do you mean by that? Asked Izuna again. Were you really the one they were after? Or was it one of us ninja? There has been no word of any shinobi seeking to take your life. The request that was related to Lord Hokage was that you have an escort to protect you against any roving bands of thieves and brigands. In any case, it's clear this is more than a B-rank mission. To protect you from ordinary danger until you complete the bridge you're currently constructing. Would be a simple thing. Said Kakashi. Tazuna stayed silent. Kakashi looked at him and then continued. But if you expect it to be the target of a ninja assault. Then it is beyond question that this would have been classified and priced as a mission for Chunin or Jonin Ninja. Tazuna stayed silent again. Should we turn back? I mean we are still genin, we aren't strong enough for this mission yet. Said Sakura. No. We are completing this mission no matter what. This is our first high rank mission and we are completing it without fail. 
Old man, I promise you, I will protect you with all I have. Said Naruto. The Kashi looked at Naruto smiling at the fine shinobi he has become. Sakura. Asked Kakashi, seeing if her mind had changed. Sakura thought for a little and then said, if we are all doing it, then I'm not going to be the only one staying back said Sakura. It's decided then, said Kakashi. Mr. Sensei sir. I have something you need to know, said Tazuna, catching everyone's attention. Tazuna started explaining about the dangerous man who is after his life. It is said that he's the richest man alive. Tazuna then continued to explain why Gato wants his head. Gato didn't want Tazuna to complete the bridge. That was the reason why Tazuna had sent ninjas after them and will probably send more. Tazuna then also explained why he didn't tell them this firsthand. It was because their land was poor to begin with and Tazuna didn't have enough money to pay for a B-rank mission. After Tazuna finished all this he said, I get it if you want to return now. I'll be as good as dead if you leave though. Old man, we have already decided to help you. Don't worry about it, said Naruto with a thumbs up. Kakashi also nodded. Tazuna then cheered up. Thank you. He said. Team 7 had to ride a boat to get to the other side. After arriving on land they thanked the man who took them there and took off. Naruto kept his senses up even more than before. Another attack is probably happening and he wanted to be prepared for it. Naruto then sensed something and quickly threw a kunai in that direction. Kakashi had also sensed that, but when they looked at what that was. It was a snow rabbit. Did you just? Said Sakura as she tried to punch Naruto for doing something like that to a poor rabbit. Naruto raised an eyebrow at what she was trying to do and dodged her. What? Asked Naruto, confused. Sakura then got pissed off and tried to punch him again, but Naruto dodged again. You should stop, said Naruto. Sakura, seeing as she wasn't able to punch him, stopped. Bakashi was looking at the rabbit. That's a snow hare. It's springtime. So why is it still wearing its winter pelt? Thought Kakashi. Bakashi then sensed something about to attack, but before he could want the others, Naruto did it first. Take cover everyone. Yelled Naruto. The big sword came in swinging, but it stopped after it hit a tree. Standing on the sword's hilt was a tall and noticeably muscular man with light grayish skin, short spiky black hair, dark brown eyes, and small eyebrows. He was shirtless, with his chest only covered by a belt. He wore baggy pants with a striped pattern and mimetic wrist warmers extending up to his elbows, with matching leg warmers. Well, well. If it isn't Mamachi's Abusa, the kid who ran off and left Land of the Mists, said Kakashi. Naruto was getting ready to fight but was stopped by Kakashi. Do not interfere. I'll take him alone, he is far too strong for any of you, said Kakashi as he was pulling his headband up. He's going to use it. I should better stand back. Thought Naruto. This may get a little rough, said Kakashi. The situation had escalated. Way worse than Naruto had thought. The man who attacked them was one of the legendary Seven Swordsmen of the Mist. The man named Zabuza was also known as the Demon of the Hidden Mist. Kakashi even used his Sharingan against him, but he was trekked and now trapped. Trapped in the Jutsu called Water Style. Water Prison. Zabuza's right hand was stuck keeping the water prison up. Kakashi couldn't do anything to get out of it. With the left hand, Zabuza made hand signs and created a water clone. Crap. I need to get Kakashi out of there. Thought Naruto. He looked at Sasuke, but he was still influenced by the killer intent Zabuza was letting out. Zabuza was insulting the genin. Telling them that they weren't ninjas, not until they were in his bingo book. Naruto took that personally. Zabuza's clone used a mist jutsu while hiding himself. It was useless. During this time Naruto's sensing abilities had improved by a great amount. Naruto knew which direction Zabuza was coming from. Zabuza was about to kick Naruto to the stomach, but Naruto ducked down as he quickly went through hand signs. Naruto took a deep breath and then spun while exhaling, compressing the air into a solitary blade of wind, slashing Zabuza's clone multiple times. Ambrat cursed Zabuza as he prepared another water clone. Sasuke. Take this kunai and throw it at the original when I tell you to, ordered Naruto. Sasuke didn't like taking orders, but it seemed like Naruto had a plan. Naruto made 10 shadow clones to help Sasuke while he himself stood still concentrating. After a few moments, Zabuza's clone had already dispelled all of Naruto's clones and was attacking Sasuke head on. Anytime now, Naruto yelled Sasuke. Wait. Said Naruto quietly while still concentrating. After a few more moments Naruto yelled, now. Sasuke smirked. Took you long enough, said Sasuke as he threw the kunai at the direction of Zabuza. Sasuke was still confused as to what that was going to accomplish. Zabuza started laughing. What are you trying to do? A kunai? Said Zabuza after simply dodging it, letting the kunai go past his body. Naruto also smirks as he teleported to the kunai Zabuza just dodged. This kunai will be your downfall. Said Naruto as he quickly went through hand signs at a great speed and said, wind style. Vacuum great sphere. A large sphere of compressed wind chakra came out of Naruto's mouth going in Zabuza's direction. 
Zabuza was beyond shocked and was barely able to dodge it. He dodged it at the cost of letting the jutsu that was holding Kakashi go. A small price to pay for not getting hit by that. Who knows what would have happened if he was directly hit by that jutsu, Naruto. Great job. You've all done a great job. Now leave this to me said Kakashi, praising Naruto. How did he get behind me? Thought Zabuza. Kakashi went against Zabuza in an intense battle of ninjutsu. A great number of hand signs and that at a greater speed than Naruto had ever seen. Kakashi was able to copy every jutsu Zabuza was unleashing and use it against him at the same time. But in the end, the inevitable happened. Kakashi used a jutsu Zabuza was about to use. It seemed like he could see the future. That damn Sharangan thought Zabuza as he was hit by the same jutsu he was about to use. Bastard. Can you see the future? Asked Zabuza as he was hit by a few kunai by Kakashi. Yes. And I see your death, said Kakashi. As soon as he said that Zabuza was hit by Senban needles on the neck seemingly killing him. Team 7 and Tazuna then looked at the direction the Senban came from. It looked like a missed Anbu. Thank you very much. I have been looking for a chance to kill Zabuza, and you gave me that chance, the female looking Miss Danbu said. Both Naruto and Kakashi went to where Zabuza's body was and checked for a pulse. Nothing. Zabuza was dead, but Naruto just was feeling something off about this. He looks the same age as me too. Thought Naruto. Naruto couldn't help but feel useless. Even though he had sensing abilities, they were proven useless three times now. The demon brothers shouldn't even have had the chance to attack. Same with Zabuza. If only I was stronger was the only thought that went through Naruto's mind. He was frustrated. All that training but it all seemed for nothing. Naruto clenched his fist in desperation. Bakashi noticed that. He knew what was going through Naruto's mind and knew that he shouldn't feel that way. He had plenty of help. Naruto, don't worry about it. You still did a very good job said Kakashi. The Mist Anbu grabs Ibuza and thanked Team 7 before disappearing with a shunshin. Team 7 was quiet until Tazuna broke the silence. Alright, you guys can rest at my home, he said. Alright. Our mission isn't over yet so let's go you guys, said Kakashi. As they started heading their way, Kakashi finally felt it. The after effect of using the Sharingan. As soon as he felt it, he fell down unconscious. All but Naruto looked at Kakashi, shocked and worried. Naruto knew what it was so he grabbed Kakashi with the help of a shadow clone and headed for Tazuna's house. A week has passed since Kakashi fell unconscious. And after one full week, he had finally woken up. During this week Naruto had gone through acceptable growth. Seeing as Sasuke and Sakura trained together, Naruto made 50 clones of himself. Dividing the clones in half and having one group train on the Horatian and the other on chakra control and sensing technique. Naruto already had really good chakra control, but he still wanted to train and take it to even higher levels, and that would help with his next goal. The Horatian and be able to sense unconsciously. While the clones did that, the original used, more than he could handle, chakra weights and helped the tsunami around the house. She was Tazuna's daughter. He did learn quite a lot about cooking during the time with her, and he was quite fond of her. Unlike his son, Inari. Naruto didn't have the chance to talk with him, but it was obvious he didn't like them either. The moment Kakashi woke up he started thinking about what happened the last time he was conscious. Connecting the dots Kakashi realized that Zabuza is probably still alive. And after he explained that to the rest of Team 7, they were all shocked. Naruto too, since he personally checked his pulse. Naruto cursed himself yet again for not realizing himself. Being on his first missions, the stress, the murderous intent he got from Zabuza, those all just watered down his thinking. Anyways. To prepare for what's probably to come, I'll have you all go through some training, said Kakashi while laughing a little. Naruto was excited. He's going to get trained by a legendary ninja. But oh the disappointment when he showed them what he was going to train them on. Tree walking. Seriously. We all know that already, said Naruto looking disappointed at his sensei. Sasuke and Sakura looked at Naruto confused. We? You mean to tell us that you can walk up to a tree as Kakashi sensei did? Asked Sakura. A moment of silence came from Naruto as he realized that these two can't even do simple tree walking. Naruto then walked up to a tree and went to a branch standing upside down. Sasuke and Sakura were shocked. Even Kakashi but then he remembered that he walked on water too. How is he doing that? That bastard, one time he's just an average dude and the other he's just able to teleport and walk on trees, thought Sasuke. Impressive, said Kakashi as he went on to explain how they can do that and telling them that he expects them to do the same. Kakashi then was wondering what to do with Naruto and how to train him, but then Naruto called him. Why is he? Why do you walk so strangely like that? Asked Kakashi. Oh, so you noticed. It's because of the chakra weights. It's a bit too much, but I have to do my best to improve as much as I can. Anyways, I need you to overlook my training for a little, please, said Naruto. Kakashi was shocked but also impressed. He's pushing his body to his limits. 
if he didn't have the regeneration of the Kaiubi his body would have broken down, thought Kakashi giving Naruto a nod and following him. Before Kakashi were 50 clones of Naruto. All training hard. He noticed that some were training on the Horation, some on chakra control, and the others on sensing abilities. How long have you been training like this? Asked Kakashi. Well, for the whole week, answered Naruto, chuckling a little. He just continues to impress me thought Kakashi. I imagine you know quite a lot about me, since you asked me to help you in that particular jutsu, said Kakashi. Naruto nodded. Well, there is not much I could really help you with. I can't use it if that's what you're wondering. But I can still give you some tips since I've witnessed it with my own eyes countless times, continued Kakashi. Naruto was sparkling with joy. He might finally make better progress. After Kakashi gave Naruto some tips he went off to do his own thing. While the shadow clones trained, Naruto kept doing laps and doing physical training, while increasing the weight as much as he could. After doing countless lapses Naruto ended up where Sasuke was but he couldn't move anymore. He fell down breathing heavily. He looked at Sasuke as he started laughing. Sasuke was pissed, what are you laughing at? He asked. Oh, nothing, nothing. It's just that the fact that Sakura finished before the legendary Ichiha is hilarious to me. The Ichiha don't seem that great to me now. Said Naruto trying to taunt him. And it was working. What was that, you asshole? Replied Sasuke furious at the comments Naruto made. Naruto couldn't move an inch so having an Ichiha attack him wasn't something he was looking for. Chill, Dumbus. I can help you with your training if you want, offered Naruto. HMPH, like I'd need help from someone like you, replied Sasuke. Wow, you really are a Dumbus. I'm seriously offering you help over here. Listen, I know you are all about revenge and stuff, but I'm telling you, you need to forget about that stuff for now. If you want revenge then you need to have 100% of your attention on training. Don't think about anything else but that. Just get off your high horse and fully focus on your training, said Naruto. Sasuke then looked at him and said, thank you, in a low and embarrassing voice, and then quickly looked away. Naruto noticed that his stamina was back so he went away to run. Still increasing the weights and having Kurama heal him. Thank you, Kurama, said Naruto, getting no response. He had tried to contact him, but Kurama seemed to ignore him for some reason, so Naruto left him alone for now. Six days have passed. Six days of hard and torturous training. He had trained so hard and non-stop. He went out earlier than everyone and came later than everyone else. He ate alone every time, but Naruto had gotten used to it so he didn't mind. He had greatly increased his sensing abilities, and his body had also improved way more than he had first imagined because of Kurama. He was still stuck on the Horation. He just couldn't use it fast enough as the fourth did. Guess, I've still got ways to go thought Naruto as he laid down from exhaustion. His stamina was completely gone so he could barely move, but his sensing was still up. Don't move, said Naruto in a commanding voice while holding his kunai. It was a girl, or that's what he looked like, but Naruto knew damn well that wasn't a girl, and that this was the Mistanbu that took Zabuza away. I can't move thought Naruto as he cursed himself. He could have taken him out and then only had Zabuza to deal with. W what? The guy said in a worried voice. It would be bad if I told him that I knew who he was since I can't defend myself. I'll play along thought Naruto. He put down his kunai and said, ah, sorry sorry. I thought you were going to attack me or something said Naruto while giggling. Oh. You do look like a ninja too. It must be tiresome to live in constant danger, said the boy while smiling. Not really. I'm used to it, replied Naruto. Just a little longer and I'll take you down thought Naruto as he gripped the kunai tighter. The boy noticed that and was worried if Naruto had noticed. I should probably go now. He might have noticed me he thought. How nice. I've picked up the herbs I needed so I'll go now. Good luck on your training, he said. Crap, he noticed. Come one body, come one. Thought Naruto but it was too late. At the time Naruto regained his stamina, he was already gone. He rushed in the direction he had gone, but there were no signs of him. This damn. Nothing is going my way and I hate this, thought Naruto. Naruto then released all the clones and the chakra weights. He made 100 clones to only focus on the Horatian training, while he himself got used to his new body. The next evening Naruto thought that it's a good idea for him to rest, since he's probably going to fight in the next few days. He didn't want to be useless like he did in the past fights. He went to Tazuna's home earlier than in the past few days, and he was all beat up. He practiced jutsu against his clones and was all dirty and tired. Oh, Naruto. Earlier than usual, huh? Said Kakashi. Yay, said a tired Naruto as he sat on the diner table. Sasu came a little later. He had been able to walk to the top of the tree a few days ago, but he came all beat up because he was doing his own tojutsu training. The four Naruto sat in Ari. Tazuna's grandson. Naruto had noticed before Inari was looking at his train, but didn't say anything. Inari suddenly started crying. Why? Why do you keep trying? 
No matter how much you train, you will never beat Gato, he said while tears flowing out of his eyes and then continued, no matter how hard try, the weak will always lose to the strong. Naruto didn't say anything at first as he stared at Inari. I'm not weak and I will definitely defeat Gato, said Naruto full of confidence, is too strong. All this pointless hope will lead you nowhere. Always being an optimist, always full of confidence, and always believing that you'll do it but you won't. You don't know real pain. Yelled Inari while tears were still pouring down his face. Naruto was infuriated. This brat. Thought Naruto. You just keep crying and crying like a damn crybaby. Unlike you I won't sit still, I will keep trying until I can't anymore. Naruto, that's too much, said Sakura. Naruto looked at her and then stood up and got out. He was pissed off and at this time only training could help him clear his mind. He wanted to train his tojutsu, so he made a few shadow clones to fight against until his body couldn't take it anymore. He later realized that Kakashi had talked to Inari, and as soon as he noticed that his body gave up and fell down, unable to stand anymore. He made the shadow clones pick him up and take him to the bedroom and sleep. The next morning Kakashi, Sasuke, Sakura and Tazuna went to the bridge. Naruto had taken his body to its utmost limit and Kakashi let him sleep for today. When they arrived at the bridge they saw the bodies of the co-workers down. When they saw that, mist covered the bridge and they had finally realized what was happening. Naruto had been woken up because he had sensed something in his sleep. He had trained long enough to keep the sensing up even in his sleep, but it wasn't as good as it would be when he woke up. When we woke up, a second later he heard a loud noise downstairs. Naruto realized it was someone with a sword and that he'd slashed the door open. He quickly rushed downstairs and saw Inari looking at the two men trying to kidnap his mother, Tsunami. Inari was about to rush the two to stop them, but Naruto stopped him. Naruto rushed the two at blinding speed and rendered them both unconscious in a matter of seconds. Wow, so cool, said Inari. He, said Naruto as he fist bumped with Inari. You too, Inari. You were about to attack them weren't you, said Naruto smiling. Inari nodded. He was happy with a little improvement he just made. Naruto then made sure everyone was alright and then made 10 shadow clones just in case. Naruto noticed that Inari was crying. Huh. Inari kept trying to stop his tears from coming out and kept trying to wipe them, but he couldn't. I'm sorry even though. I chose not to cry. You'll call me a crybaby again, said Inari while still trying to wipe them. Idiot. It's okay to cry when you're happy, said Naruto while smiling. Naruto then realized something and said, Inari, I'm sorry for what I said yesterday. I take it back. No, thank you, said Inari as he let the tears pour out. Naruto smiled and then said, all right then, I have to go help my teammate, while well, he stood still concentrating on the kunai Sasuke got from Naruto when they fought Zabuza before. Sasuke had kept it to try and find how Naruto had teleported before. It was still a mystery to him. Sasuke was fighting the masked guy that had posed as a Mist Anbu. Naruto had already told them of his encounter with him so they already knew. Sasuke clashed with him, but Sasuke was obviously faster. All he did, Sasuke easily dodged. Sasuke sped up and went behind him, seemingly teleporting and kicked him away. Haku, if you continue like this you will lose, said Zabuza. Hi, said Haku as he did a hand sign. Suddenly ice started to form around Sasuke. The ice was turned into mirrors as it surrounded Sasuke like a dome. Sasuke was trapped inside. Haku went inside of one of the mirrors and started attacking Sasuke with Senban. Sasuke covered his head with his hands protecting himself from the Senban. Akashi wanted to go and help Sasuke, but he was stopped by Zabuza. Sasuke waited for the Senban to hit him, but it never did. He only heard a sound of the kunai deflecting them. He raised his head to see what happened only to see his teammate, Naruto. Naruto? Said Sasuke, shocked. He wanted to ask him how he came so fast, but then remembered the kunai he had from Naruto. Naruto was holding two of the special kunai in his hands, and on the ground surrounding them were Senban that Naruto had stopped. Naruto looked around and saw that he was surrounded by ice mirrors, and the enemy was attacking Senbans by moving between mirrors with insane speed. Naruto could follow him. Kakashi was with Zabuza, so all Naruto had to do was defeat this one enemy. If it's frozen water then I will deal with this, said Sasuke as he went through a few hand signs and used the fireball jutsu. When the fireball hit, Sasuke noticed that his fire was still too weak against his ice. Water dripped down from the mirrors, but it still didn't do enough damage. Aku kept attacking with Senbans, but even this was too much for Naruto. He had to protect Sasuke and himself. For some reason Naruto felt that he couldn't move freely. His body was being held back by something, but he didn't know what. Attacks came from every direction, and it was hard to protect both himself and Sasuke. Naruto created a few shadow clones to protect Sasuke and distract Haku. He had to come up with a plan to counter him, while he also tried to figure out what was holding his body back. Haku destroyed all the clones, as well as the one that was protecting Sasuke. The area was covered in the mist because of Zabuza, and Naruto cursed as this was inconvenient for him. 
He tried destroying the mirrors with his fist encased in rock, but after destroying it, it regenerated again. Naruto created more clones attacking Haku, and Sasuke had started to also attack him with his fireball jutsu. Haku was starting to get overwhelmed with the two of them, and Naruto stayed in one place trying to find Haku's weakness. While Haku was busy attacking Naruto's clones, Sasuke had gotten his leg with the fireball jutsu. Naruto thought he could try something. He dispelled all his clones and started rushing Haku. Following him mirror to mirror. Naruto could follow him. Sasuke was looking at how fast Naruto was moving. Sasuke was shocked because even he himself couldn't move at that speed. Naruto was even more shocked because he knew he could move faster than this yet he couldn't. My body feels heavier and it's getting heavier every time. Just what is happening to my body thought Naruto. Naruto kept following, waiting for him to run out of stamina or chakra. But then the unexpected happened. Haku decided to attack, ignoring Naruto he went for Sasuke throwing countless enben at him. Naruto completely forgot about him. Using as much chakra as he could, he ran to Sasuke to protect him. But he was too slow. He should have been faster, but he still wondered why he couldn't move. He finally realized why he probably couldn't move. He unconsciously imagined himself wearing the weights that he used to train himself with, and that slowed him down. Two weeks of torturous training, even though it granted him speed, he still hadn't gotten used to it as much as he liked to. His body was still remembering that strain and because of that, he was slower. Due to the stress of not wanting to be useless and wanting to save Sasuke, his body remembered the strain and wouldn't go any faster. It was strange. The aftereffect of using way more weights than the body could handle and abusing Kurama's healing thought Naruto as he cursed himself. He looked at Sasuke getting stabbed with countless enben as Sasuke fell down on the ground. He saw Sasuke get killed right before his eyes. He cursed his body and himself. He looked at Sasuke's seemingly lifeless body as Naruto was overflowing with rage. Naruto was covered with smoke and was boiling with rage. You will pay. With your life, said Naruto. Red demonic chakra was circling around him as it cracked the ground. The color of his eyes changed to that of Kurama's. The iris changed to red and the pupils slid. His nails and canine teeth grew longer and sharper. His hair also grew longer and spikier, and the whisker-like marks on his cheeks widened and thickened. Good, Naruto. Give in to hatred. I will kill him for you. I will take revenge for you, said Kurama laughing at him. Naruto was enraged. He looked at Sasuke's body one more time, and his rage increased even more. He looked at Kurama trying to influence him to give him his body. That was when Naruto came back to his senses. He was a shinobi, he shouldn't give in to hatred so easily. He will kill his enemy, not because he killed Sasuke, but because he is a threat to Konoha and his mission. He regained control over his body, and as soon as he came to, he saw Senban flying towards him. But before they could hit him, something strange happened. The Senban stopped as though they had hit an invisible wall right before they came near Naruto and then fell to the ground. Naruto didn't know what that was but paid it no mind. Naruto punched every single mirror down to the last one. The speed was way more impressive than before, and before the ice could regenerate, Naruto destroyed another mirror. When it came down to the last one, Haku couldn't escape. Naruto focused Kurama's chakra into his fist and with all his strength punched him in his guts. Naruto's punch went through him and as he pulled his hand out, Naruto could see the other side through Haku's wound. Haku dropped down lifeless. Naruto's red chakra went away and he finally calmed down. Naruto looked down on Haku's lifeless body as he noticed the mist clear away. He looked to his right, happy to see his sensei had also finished the job. He sat down in relief that it was finally over. Stupid, I will never fall in hatred. And I swear, I will never be so down like I was just now said Naruto as he saw Kurama hide in the shadows of his cage. Naruto looked at Sasuke, still upset that he just lost a comrade. He hated this every time some inconvenience showed up and Naruto couldn't do anything. He couldn't use his powers as much as he wanted to. He was always held back by something. He noticed that he was fully healed and that his body wasn't suffering anymore and he could use it at its full capabilities. What's the point? It's too late, the enemy is dead and Sasuke is too. Weak. Weak 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 weak, I'm too weak. Thought Naruto. He was beginning to hate himself. He clenched his fist as he was punching the ground again and again. His fist was immediately healed after punching the ground, but Naruto just kept hitting as he couldn't stop. He had finally noticed someone coming. Gato and his men. Kakashi was getting ready to fight them alone, but Naruto stopped him. Leave this to me, yelled Naruto. Kakashi looked at Naruto and saw determination. He stood ready to jump in at any moment. You better run if you don't want to die, yelled Naruto again as he pulled two kunai in each of his hands. The men laughed at the kid. What's a kid like you going to do? Asked one of them. Naruto finally wanted to contribute to his mission, and since he wasn't getting held back by anything right now, he was going to kill every one of them. I'm going to slash your throats, each and every one of you is dead now, declared Naruto as he rushed at them. 
He went through them with his kunai, slashing their throats open. No mercy. He didn't care anymore. He was too far gone after killing Haku, and as a shinobi, he will kill anyone who interferes with his mission. They couldn't react to him. He was too fast for them to even see him. All they saw before their life ended was a dark red flash. After mere seconds, Naruto slashed everyone. Everyone was on the ground soaked in their own blood. The whole ground was painted red, and Naruto was stained by their filthy blood. Show no regret. Naruto went back to the team as if he hadn't just mercilessly killed Gato and his men. Physically, his body was in top shape, but mentally he was about to fall unconscious, but he just acted as if everything was fine. He saw Sakura laying on Sasuke's body, crying. With this, the mission is about over, said Naruto quietly as he stood next to Kakashi. Yay, said Kakashi silently. He was worried about Naruto. The first kill wasn't easy, and it didn't make it any easier after you kill multiple people. Naruto. Thought Kakashi. It'd be better if we don't tell Sakura that I just killed them. Said Naruto silently as he looked on the ground. Kakashi put his hand on Naruto's shoulder and nodded. Suddenly Naruto felt someone move behind him. He quickly looked behind him and saw his comrade stand up. Sasuke. Yelled Naruto with a surprised voice but still happy. Although they hadn't been close, they still were friends, and Naruto was happy he didn't die because he was weak. He was so happy that he could cry buckets. But he couldn't. Naruto then saw all the villagers that had come to help them and saw little Inari with a crossbow. Naruto smiled. Although he had just killed so many people he could still smile. He protected these people and didn't let anyone die from his side. I will continue like this and won't let anyone ever go against the leaf. I will train to become stronger, strong enough to protect my village and my comrades from any threats thought Naruto as he chuckled and clenched his fist. He held the first high telling Inari that he won while well smiling. Inari also smiled at his idol. The mission was almost done. Team 7 just had to wait until Tazuna finished the bridge. Naruto had created 50 shadow clones to solely focus on the Horatian, but hadn't done any Tajutsu training. He wanted to be ready if anything were to happen. The week passed and the Tazuna finished building the bridge with the help of the other villagers. Naruto could almost flawlessly use the Horatian, but it still had a two-second delay which he didn't like. It still made traveling easier though. All the villagers had gathered to say goodbye to Team 7. Goodbye, everyone, said Naruto as he waved them goodbye. The Nari looked at him holding his tears back. You can cry, you know, said Naruto while laughing. I'm not going to cry. You can cry too, Naruto, said Inari, still holding his tears back. Naruto looked at him and smiled. I would if I could. Thought Naruto as he kept his smile up. With a wave of his hand, Naruto uses the Horatian to teleport Team 7 to Leaf. D they are gone, they said all in unison. Oh oh, yay. We should think of a name for the bridge, said one of the villagers. Yay. The Great Naruto Bridge. That sounds good, doesn't it? Replied Tazuna. Yay yelled everyone in unison. Team 7 teleported to Naruto's room. Wow thought all three. Impressive, Naruto. You have improved a lot in your jutsu praised Kakashi. Naruto looked up to see him and smiled proudly. He only needed a few more weeks and he would be flawless at using it. How is he so strong? How can he just teleport us instantly when it would have taken hours and hours of running thought Sasuke. He had one goal in his mind and he would do anything to fulfill that goal. But first, he had to overcome a wall if he wanted to achieve that goal. And that wall was Naruto. Anyways you guys should go and rest while I go report to Hokage-sama. Especially you, Naruto. Said Kakashi getting an okay from all the students as they head out. Naruto stayed in his room and laid on his bed. He was thinking about all those people he had killed. For the past seven days, he could barely sleep. The moment he fell asleep, the people he killed came and haunted him. He would wake up swimming in sweat. He had to find a way to deal with it. I will kill anyone and everyone who stands in my village's way. I am a shinobi, a tool to be used by the leaf, and I will become the most fearsome and strongest shinobi there is thought Naruto. This had somewhat helped him as he just thought he did for his village. I did it for the village, I did it for the village, I did it for the village that's all Naruto thought. Two months passed as Naruto trained as much as he could. They went on a few C-rank missions, and they were really easy as they only had to fight bandits. He had become closer friends with Sasuke as he realized that he really related to him. Both without parents and both looked down on. Sasuke, as the last surviving Ichiha and Naruto as the Kaiubi. They had some casual conversations and sometimes even trained together. That was when Sasuke realized he had to train even harder because Naruto was on another level. During the two months, Naruto had mostly focused on the Horatian and increasing his own speed and strength. After the first month, Naruto learned how to flawlessly use the Horatian, but he wanted to go further. He wanted to use his red lightning mode to increase his speed even more. He improved the lighting mode also, but it was still nothing compared to what the Rakage used. While training with the lightning mode and with the Horatian Naruto had come up with a great idea. 
infusing the technique formula with lightning chakra and when he teleported to that mark, then the enemy would get hit by lightning chakra. This would help Naruto react even faster and do more damage. On his free days, he did extreme tojutsu training while increasing the weights to insane amounts. Naruto had focused on his training so much that he had forgotten about his rival, Konohamaru. He was walking in the village with Team 7 after finishing another mission. Sasuke had walked off and Kakashi was gone to report to the Hokage. Naruto was about to go away when he sensed Konohamaru behind him. Oh, Konohamaru, said Naruto excitedly. Naruto looked down to see a confused square rock. Konohamaru lifts the cardboard, which was made to look like a rock, up and says, as expected from my rival behind him were a body and a girl the same age as him. Konohamaru wore grey shorts and a yellow shirt with a red Konoha symbol printed on it. Yudin, which was on Konohamaru's right side, had short brown hair and dark eyes. Naruto noticed that the drip of snot always hung from his nose, but Yudin never bothered wiping it. He also wore circular glasses. He wore a simple blue shirt which zipped up the middle, a pair of brown pants, and sandals. On Konohamaru's left side was Mogi. She had her orange hair tied up with red elastics into two very large pigtails. She also had a perpetual blush. She wore a red tank top over a pink t-shirt layered at the bottom, her pants were grey, and she wore the traditional ninja sandals. Naruto had met them a few times before and had played ninja with them sometimes. Although he really didn't like the game he saw that they liked it, so he went on with it. Hey, you guys, said Naruto. You really are the best leader. You noticed us so quickly, said Konohamaru while the other two nodded. Naruto smiled a little. He didn't mind getting called a leader. Thank you, he replied. Konohamaru was about to say something, but then noticed a girl behind him. Nin, leader. Is she your? Said Konohamaru while smirking. Naruto looked behind him and noticed what he meant. Sakura. Not really, she is just my F well teammate I guess, replied Naruto again. Konohamaru looked at him and then looked at her and said, well, she does have an abnormally huge forehead, I can see why you wouldn't date her, he laughed a little when he said that. Um, you should run, said Naruto as he laughed a little. Konohamaru looked at him confused as to what he meant, but then he looked behind and saw the furious pink-haired girl about to punch the hell out of him. He ran away, as fast as he could. Running for his life. As he looked behind to see if she was catching up, he bumped into someone. Thank you so much for watching this video. I do hope you enjoy it. If you want the next part of this video. Turn on that bell notification. Like subscribe and comment down below. And also check out the others videos. I have created and enjoyed it. See you guys next video. Till that, take care.